the theoretical structure and methods of solution that we have studied in the previous lessons. For second order linear equations extend directly to linear equations of the third and higher order. What's up guys and welcome to differential equations. In this lesson, we're going to discuss about and explore two important methods in solving non-homogeneous higher order linear differential equations. These two methods, namely method of undetermined coefficients and method of variation of parameters, have their advantages and disadvantages. But before that, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel for today can be found in 1 Corinthians 11.27, and it says, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Paul knew what it was like when things got tough. He went through a lot of really hard things. Yet in the middle of all that, he kept focus or he kept his focus on Jesus. Even when he had every night or every right to want to give up and call it quits, he didn't. He stayed firm in his faith. In our lives, we might get upset and feel things or feel like things are tough. Maybe the pressures of finals seems hard. You might have three school projects due on Friday and getting them all done feels overwhelming. Life comes with pressure. Hard times do come. The question is, what do you do in difficulty? Do you give up? Do you blame God? How do you handle the tough things that come your way? One thing you can do is to be like Paul. He found peace and joy in Jesus. Things might be difficult, they might be crazy, but you can be at peace. Keep your eyes on Jesus and you'll find what that if you focus in him, your life can be at peace regardless of what is going on around you. As the salience, may we respond in prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of thee. St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so now we have come to discuss about non-homogeneous higher order linear differential equations. First, let's talk about the general solution, the general structure of solution for non-homogeneous higher order linear differential equation. Just a quick uh, review you know, of non-homogeneous second order linear differential equation. If you have an equation, a second order, a solde, that has a general form a of x, y double prime plus b of x, y prime plus c of x, y equals f of x. It can be expressed no? in standard form, of course, and that is if you divide a of x with the whole equation, it will become y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus b of x, y equals f of x, where of course, b of x is b of x over a of x and q of x is c of x over a of x. And of course, your capital F of x uh, I'm sorry, you know, small f of x is equivalent to capital F of x over a of x. So these are all forms pertaining to uh, an expression uh, for uh, differential equations. In general, no, uh, differential equations can also be in the form of what we call the n form, wherein it is expressed as a sub n, y raised to n, plus a sub n minus 1, y raised to n minus 1, until a sub 1 y prime plus a sub 0 y and equals f of x. Now, in this form, no, let us never forget, no, never forget that if our f of x, our f of x meaning yung ating also called as the forcing function, no, this f of x here in the right hand side of the equation also called as forcing function because uh, in many applications it is described uh, as an externally as an externally applied force, okay? Now recall or um, never forget that this f of x or forcing function here is called homogeneous if it is equivalent to zero. Now otherwise, it is non-homogeneous. And this is 
actually what we will be concentrating in this discussion because in our previous lesson, we have already tackled how to handle homogeneous equations. Now, what is the general solution for a non-homogeneous differential equation? Well, for the non-homogeneous linear ODE, the general or complete solution is actually the sum of two solutions. And what are those two solutions? The, part, the homogeneous equation, y sub h, and the particular solution, y sub p. Now, there are two methods that can be used to solve non-homogeneous DE that we will be exploring in this lesson. The first one is called, and of course, yes, the sum of uh, the general solution is yh plus yp. The first method that we're going to explore is what we call the method of undetermined coefficients. Method of undetermined coefficients. So the, the idea really, the basic idea for this method is actually an educated guess or trial guess, which is motivated by the different kinds of functions that make up the forcing function called f of x. So basically, we have to inspect on the f of x in the right hand side and then try, no, that is what we call, that is why it's called undetermined coefficients because we seek to determine uh, an assigned value for the coefficient. Yeah. So we will be uh, basically uh, doing trial, no, uh, in, in, in based on the f of x here, the forcing function. Now, the general method is limited, fortunately, only to linear DEs, such as the general n order form of expression given to you on the screen, where, of course, yung ating coefficients a sub i, where i is equal to 0, 1, until n are constants, and where f of x is a constant k, could be a constant k, so that's number 1, could be a polynomial function, number 2, could be an exponential function, number three, and could be a sine or cosine function uh, uh, or a combination or finite sums and products of these four functions. So ano yun? Yung f of x natin could be a constant, it could be a polynomial function, it could be an exponential function, and it could be a sine function, and even the sum and product of these functions. Now, let's take a look at a very basic no, uh, case for f of x, or forcing function. Case 1, no, if our f of x is a polynomial function, let's call p sub n of x, which is an nth degree polynomial in x, let us assume a solution of the form y sub p equals k naught plus k sub 1 x until k sub n minus 1 x raised to n minus 1 plus k sub n x raised to n. So I uh, actually rewrote this and prefer this kind of notation, y sub p equals a plus bx until y x raised to n minus 1 until z. I prefer using the alphabet letters no, for me to reduce confusion. Now, what will we notice in this polynomial function? We will notice that uh, for this polynomial function, the um, degree no, of the polynomial or rather the uh, number of x present no? uh, as a factor uh, included or multiplied with our undetermined coefficient that we are trying to assign is dependent no, on what degree the polynomial is. So for example, if your polynomial is x, then you can expect that yp, if your, let's say, f of x, if your f of x is x, you can expect that your yp or your trial particular solution has the form of a plus bx, okay? So kung ano yung degree ng polynomial mo, in this case, this is x raised to 1, yun din yung um, uh, particular solution mo kung hanggang saan yung existence ng x. So in this case, x raised to 1 lang din siya. So let's say, for example, x squared to, edi magiging a plus bx plus c x squared. Yun. So kung anong degree ng iyong f of x, ng forcing function, tatapatan mo din siya no, ng particular solution or ng trial solution 
dito sa iyong y sub p. Okay? So, paano kung x cubed yan? Eh, di ganun din. a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed. And so on and so forth, of course. X raised to n until z sub n. Where, of course, please do take note that a, b, and y, z, we're used to just simplify the coefficients para less yung confusion. Where z is not necessarily the end of the coefficient of the function above. So, again, this um, trial solution is dependent on the degree of the polynomial. Okay? The highest degree of the polynomial. So, for example, kahit pa yan ay x plus x squared, yung, yung f of x, yung nasa right-hand side ng equation mo, ang magiging trial solution mo na possible ay a plus bx plus cx squared. Okay? Yeah. So, dependent on the highest degree polynomial. Now, another possible f of x would be the exponential function. Okay? So, if f of x is k, for k is a constant, e raised to mx, an nth degree polynomial in x, assume the solution of the form y sub p equals e, a rather, e raised to mx. Okay? a e raised to mx. So, kung yun nasa right-hand side ng equation mo, has an exponential function, then your trial solution has the form, has a form of a e raised to mx. Now, another uh, allowed case for the method of undetermined coefficients is the sine or cosine function. So, kung yung f of x mo, yung forcing function mo, has an expression of either of these three, sine, cosine, or even sum or combination, linear combination of the two, where k and beta are constants, we will be assuming the solution of the form y sub p equals a cosine beta x plus b sine beta x, where a and b are those of our undetermined coefficients. So yung a, b, c, even yung previous cases natin, yun yung ating what we call undetermined coefficients. So to summarize, no, for the method of undetermined coefficients, we have basically, well, three cases. We have first the polynomial function, no, p sub n of, of x will have a trial or particular solution of a plus bx until yung kanyang nth degree, okay? Until yung kanyang nth degree. So kung this is n raised to 3, and, uh, sorry, if n is equal to 3, then that will be a plus bx plus cx squared, no? cx squared plus uh, dx cubed, if n is equal to 3. Now, if uh, this should not be real and repeated, rather this should be a complex, complex, complex function, no? If your case, uh, if the forcing function is an exponential function, or rather not complex function, exponential, sorry, exponential. If your forcing function is an exponential function, no, it will have a particular or a trial form of y sub p equals a e raised to mx. And finally, for not complex roots, So to summarize some solutions for method of undetermined coefficients, for case one, no, if our forcing function or our f of x is a polynomial function, then we can have a guess solution of a plus bx plus until y x raised to n minus 1 plus z x raised to n. Again, yung degree ng inyong polynomial or yung degree ng x mo sa particular solution ay dependent sa degree ng iyong polynomial. Yun. So, kung ang uh, f of x or forcing function mo ay exponential naman, then makakaasa ka na yung particular solution mo has a form of a e raised to mx. And finally, for sine and cosine function, 
sine beta x, cosine beta x, and even the sum of them will have a form of y sub b equals a cosine beta x plus b sine beta x. All right. Now, there are some rules that we must consider no? in uh, the method of undetermined coefficients. Number one, this is what they call the basic rule. And that is if f of x is one of the functions in one of these cases, provided determine its undetermined coefficients by substituting y sub p and its derivatives into the given de. So basically, ang sinasabi rito, kung meron kang forcing function yung nasa right-hand side of the equation mo na nagpo-fall in one of the categories na pupwede sa method of undetermined coefficients at yun ay yung mga una, kapag ka siya ay constant, siya ay polynomial, siya ay um, exponential at kung siya ay sine or cosine, pag doon nag-fall yung f of x mo, then pupwede gamitin ang method of undetermined coefficients. At yun ay mangyayari kapag ka sinubstitute mo yung y sub p and its derivatives into the given de. So mula dun sa trial form mo, yung yp mo, from those cases, substitute mo siya dun sa given problem. At pati yung mga derivatives niya. Depende sa kung anong uh, order nung de mo. Okay? Second is yung what we call the modification rule. It says that kung meron daw, if any term of the suggested solution y sub p is a solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation, then magmultiply ka daw ng x doon sa yp mo repeatedly until no term of the product, yung product ng x at yp, eto yon x raised to k yp, is a solution of the homogeneous equation. Then, use the product x raised to k yp to solve the non-homogeneous equation. Basically, yung sinasabi dito, kapag ka daw, yung trial solution mo, yung y sub p mo, no? ay merong kahalintulad or ka, kaparehas dun sa homogeneous equation, kaparehas ng, ng expression. Ano? Ang kailangan mo lang daw gawin ay magmultiply ng x repeatedly hanggang wala ng term ng product na x raised to kyp ay solution ng homogeneous equation. Okay? So, uh, then use the product to solve for the non-homogeneous equation. So, yung natirang, uh, for example, kung x yung minultiply mo, tapos hindi pa rin gumana, eh. tapos sa x squared, yun, gumana na. Then, gamitin mo daw itong product na to i-retain mo na siya, x squared multiplied by noong guess solution mo or suggested solution para masolve mo yung non-homogeneous equation mo. Okay? And thirdly, yung tinatawag na sum rule. Sa sum rule, ang sinasabi lang dyan, the, the f of x, if f of x is sum of the functions in the cases, then, yp is the sum of its equivalent yp functions. In other words, kapag ka, uh, f of x ay uh, yung sum ng f of x mo ay nagpo-fall in any of the cases na allowed sa method of undetermined coefficients, no? then yung yp mo ay pwede mo siyang uh, i-decompose or isa-isahin no? and then add them all together and they will still be the equivalent yp functions. Yun yung tinatawag na some rule. Okay, let us now proceed and have an exercise. No, let us try and figure out. No, guess. No, what will be the form of our yp? Yung ating trial solution for the given or the following f of x as shown on the screen. Number one, we have a constant one. Kapag kaganyan ang ating f of x, ano kaya? ang dapat maging form ng ating yp. Pause this for a while and try to guess. The answer is a. Okay? So for any constant, no, it is represented simply by an undetermined coefficient. Let's call a. How about number 2? We have 5x plus 7. Pause this again now. The correct answer is a plus bx. Bakit? Kasi yung polynomial mo, this is a polynomial function, 5x plus 7, at yung highest degree variable mo is 1. That is why a plus bx ang trial particular solution natin. Pangatlo, how about 
3x squared plus 2. Pause this again. The form of yp should be, yes, a plus bx plus cx squared. So by now, medyo nakuha nyo na yung pattern, ano? Depende sa degree ng polynomial, yung expansion, if I could say, ng ating trial particular solution. How about number 4? Hmm, ito, x cubed minus x plus 1. Yes, it's a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed. Yon. So kung ano ali, yung degree ng yung polynomial, ganun din dapat yung katumbas, tatapatan dapat siya noong trial particular solution mo. How about number 5? We have sine 4x. This one is case 3, right? Sine or cosine function. Pag sine 4x, ang form of YPI, correct. A cosine 4x plus B sine 4x. E paano pag cosine 4x? Ano kaya ang trial particular solution? The answer is, yes, the same. A cosine 4x plus B sine 4x. E paano kung pag ko yung dalawa? Sine 4x plus cosine 4x. What would be our trial particular solution? Yes. The correct answer is still A cosine 4x plus B sine 4x. So kahit ano dun sa tatlo, either sine independently, cosine independently, or the combination of the two, ito pa rin yung magiging form ng trial particular solution. How about number 7? Ito exponential e raised to 5x. The answer is, yes, a e raised to 5x. So, kuha pati yung 5, no? Even here, yung beta x natin, kuha din, no? So, please do take note of that. How about number 8? We have 9x. Ito, combination na to ng polynomial case 1 and exponential case 2. Ano kaya ang magiging solution for, or trial particular solution for number 8? The answer is, Hmm. We have here a plus bx and then multiplied by e raised to 5x. Now, ganito yung tatandaan nyo pag exponential ang inyong encounter. When you encounter an exponential function uh, that is multiplied or a product of your forcing function f of x, always remember na yung exponential nyo parang multiply lang siya. And then the rest, uh, do your magic. <laughs> parang ganun. So, kung ito ay, expone uh, kung ito ay uh, algebraic, and or a polynomial expression, edi alam natin that case 1 is a plus bx, and then simply just multiply yung e raised to 5x. No, ang cool ni exponential function. Ano. How about number 9? So we have here another uh, case 1 and case 2, product of case 1 and case 2, which is x squared e raised to 5x. For this one, what do you think would be our answer? Ito, medyo may clue na tayo pagdating dito sa x squared natin, ano? We are sure na yung trial solution natin would have a form of a plus bx plus cx squared, correct? Pero ano mangyayari sa e raised to 5x? You are right. Makakapi lang siya. Yan. Now, how about this expression? We have your e raised to 3x and then sine 4x, a combination of case 2 and case 3. What would be the trial particular solution in this case? The answer is a cosine 4x plus b sine 4x, and then yun, multiplied uli itong whole factor nila no, to e raised to 3x. So yun pala yung expression pagka exponential and sine function dito sa trial particular solution natin sa MUC. How about number 11? 5x squared sine 4x. So ito, dalawa na to. Na, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, polynomial and... Um, sine function ito, case 1 and case 3. Paano kaya ang magiging trial solution natin? We know na itong 5x squared natin eh, ay uh, aabot hanggang cx squared. So that would be a plus bx plus cx squared. Pero paano yung sine 4x natin? <coughs> Saan siya magpo-fall? Excuse me. What will be the structure of this solution? Well, pagkaganyan yung combination mo, case 1 and case 3, the solution will have this kind of form. So ano yun? Well, you have a plus bx plus cx squared. Ito yung magiging coefficient mo for the cosine 4x. And then, d plus ex plus fx squared sine 4x. Ayan. So, ano man notice natin dyan? We, we can notice na ano, um, 
multiplied no yung uh, yung yung case 1 no dun sa cosine 4x and sine 4x mo yan so a plus bx plus cx squared tapos pagdating dito sa cos sa sine no hindi inulit yung gamit ng a b and c bagkus ito ay gumamit ng iba pang uh, variable for the representation of the coefficient and that is d e and f okay so paano ko malalaman kung ilan ang ang coefficient na dapat na meron well depende doon sa uh, depende doon sa iyong case 1 o polynomial term how about lastly ito tatlo to no? we have a polynomial we have an exponential and a cosine function what would be the answer for this one may clue na tayo sabi natin kanina basta may exponential e raised to 3x yan mamamultiply na yan sa buong equation but how about x and cosine 4x Alam natin na kapag ka ang x ang ating f of x, makakaasa tayo ang trial solution ay a plus bx. Tama? So kung a plus bx tapos may cosine 4x ka, ano kayo mangyayari? Yes, magiging coefficient mo si a plus bx and then imumultiply mo si e raised to 3x sa buong equation. At magkakaroon kang ganitong itsura. Ayan, a plus bx and then actually itong e raised to 3x at e raised to 3x here can be factored out. So, you will notice, no, nakamultiply talaga siya doon sa a plus bx cosine 4x plus c plus dx sine 4x. Itong e raised to 3x, no? So, yun. Tatluhan na siya. Right? So, I hope you got something from, uh, from it. And by this time, we are now ready to proceed with a sample problem. Okay. So, example number one. So, the problem obviously is a non-homogeneous differential equation kasi yung ating f of x here is clearly uh, not zero. And so, solution, no? As we have already discussed, the general solution for a non-homogeneous differential equation is given to us, pag sinabi natin general solution, yung complete solution, it is given to us by y equals yh plus yp. Therefore, kung we need these two components, yh and yp here, pwede natin i-break down yung ating solution into two parts. First is finding yh, no? the homogeneous solution, and that is when f of x is equal to 0. So when f of x, f of x is equal to 0, <coughs> excuse me, our equation will become y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals 0, obviously, right? And from here, we can identify and actually um, make yung ating characteristic equation. Yung characteristic equation natin will become m squared, no? m squared minus 4m minus 12 equals 0. So, based din siya dun sa form ng ating differential equation since second order siya, m basically translates to the order of the DE. In this case, second order, so m squared, ito first uh, uh, order DE, is 4m, and then minus 12. So, solving for m, this is a quadratic equation. This can be solved by a uh, quadratic formula or, of course, we can use our calculator to solve for m. So, let's bring out our calculators. And then let's go to mode. If you're using Casio 9, uh, 991ES or 570ES, uh, you can go to mode 5, that's equation, and then 3, no? For the quadratic equation. Okay. And then let's input our coefficients. Yung coefficient natin is 1. We have 1 here. And we have negative 4 and then negative 12. Okay. So back to our calculator. 1 then negative 4, and then negative 12. This will give us 6 and negative 2 as our roots. Yun. So our roots are 6 and negative 2. Okay. Now, if 6 and negative 2 is our roots, we know that this is uh, case, two, case 1. 
um, uh, because of the roots 6 and negative 2. Case 1 is real and distinct, so we know yung ating homogeneous solution will be given to us by C1 e raised to negative 6. I'm oh, sorry, 6. Uh oh. 6 and x plus c2 e raised to negative 2 x. Okay? So, meron na tayo ng ating homogeneous component, yh. We can now proceed second part, which is yung yp naman natin, particular solution, which is when f of x is not equal to 0, rather but equal to 3e raised to 5x as given in the problem. No. Now, in finding for yung ating um, yp, no, by method of undetermined coefficients, no, we'll have to look at the form of our f of x. So what will be the form of our yp? What is the trial yp? here based on the f of x. Well, the form of yp will be, since this is a case 2, exponential, no? So, the trial uh, particular solution will become a e raised to 5x. Ayun. Now, this a e raised to 5x will be our trial yp, and so yp equals a e raised to 5x. And we need to get yung ating, uh, we need to differentiate this twice. Bakit? Kasi yung ating given problem, y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y, we need to substitute yung value ng yp, yung y prime p, and y double prime p in our equation in order for it to be solved. So let's go ahead and do that. Taking the first derivative, this will become 5 a e raised to 5x. 5 kasi derivative ng eu is du, right? Then taking the second derivative of this will give us yeah, 25 a e raised to 5x. Okay, now that we have our y p, y, uh, y sub p prime and then y sub p double prime, let's now substitute. No, substituting these values to our equation y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals 3e e raised to 5x. Okay? Move lang natin ng kaunti to. And let's go ahead and do that. So this will become, um, we have here y double prime, so ito dapat yun, 25. So we have 25 a e raised to 5x and then minus 4 no minus 4 y prime at yon so we have um 5 a e raised to 5x and then we have negative 12 y which is a e raised to 5x equals what is our f of x yes this one 3 e raised to 5x 3 e raised to 5x so basically the idea for this method of undetermined coefficients is to identify an yung a na yon no this is our this is what we seek to find yung value for a so that after finding a we'll be able to um uh Substitute it back to the form of yp natin, this one here. Uh, and then, yeah, that's that will be our yp already. And pag nakuha na natin yung yp, we can add it to yh and we'll now have our complete solution. Okay? So how can we pi find out a in this equation? Well, if we're going to look at the equation, both factor ng lahat ng terms na ito ay e raised to 5x. We can factor that out, no? We can bring out e raised to 5x outside and we will generate an equation such as a 
la ng e. So it will become 25a and then minus 20a and then minus 12a. Um, no. And then 3e e raised to 5x. We know that uh, e raised to 5x cancels out here. No? Both sides because it's present. Siya. Left hand side and right hand side. 25 minus 20 is 5. And 5 minus 12 is negative 7. So we're going negative 7. A equals 3. Therefore, solving for A, we're going to get A equals negative 3 over 7. Ayun. So, na-determine na natin yung undetermined coefficient. Thus, our YP, since it is A e raised to 5x, yung form niya, trial form niya, we're now going to have YP equals negative 3 over 7 e raised to 5x. And therefore, since y equals yh plus yp, our general solution will be y equals c sub 1. c sub 1, we have um, e raised to 5x, uh, e raised to, ano nga yun? Ito pala, e raised to 6x and e raised to negative 2x. e raised to 6x, e raised to 6x, oops, sorry, plus c2 e raised to negative 2, Plus, ano yung YP natin? Yes, negative 3 over 7. Uh oh Negative 3 over 7. E raised to 5. X. Ayan. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is now our general solution. Now, this general solution here is the complete solution. Y, is, uh, y equals c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x plus negative 3 over 7 e raised to 5x. All right. So, next example. So, solution. So, the left-hand side of the equation is the same as our previous problem, no? And we know that the general solution for a non-homogeneous D is YH plus YP. So, just like in the, on the previous problem, no? We can quantify this by taking YH and YP separately, no? And then adding in them all together. For the homogeneous solution, we know that the homogeneous part would be when f of x is equal to 0, right? Now, when f of x is 0, just like in our previous example, um, <clears throat> we'll have a characteristic equation of m squared minus 4m minus 12 equals 0. And we know this already that m is negative 6 and 2, sorry, 6 and negative 2 from our previous problem. That is why our homogeneous equation is c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x, right? And so, our concern now would be in computing yp. Yeah. 
and yp is simply when f of x equals sine 2x. Okay, so let's now ask ourselves, what is the form, what would be the form of our yp, our trial solution, since yung f of x natin is sine 2x? This falls under case 2, correct? So this means that the form of yp would be a cosine beta x plus b sine beta x. Ayon. And so our yp would then be equal to a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x. Taking the first and second derivatives of yp will give us y sub p prime. It will give us um, negative 2 a sine 2x plus 2 b cosine 2x. All right. And taking another derivative. So this will give us negative um, 4a cosine 2x minus 4b sine 2x. Ayan. So handa na tayo para i-substitute itong mga values na ito papunta sa ating given differential equation. So substituting substituting to our given de which is y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals sine 2x will actually give us an equivalent expression of so plug in natin dito what is our y double prime our y double prime is this one, so that's negative 4, negative 4a cosine 2x, and then minus 4b sine 2x, okay? What else? Of course, minus 4, and then, and in y prime natin, this component here, that's negative 2, negative 2a sine 2x plus b or 2b cosine 2x of course minus 12 and then any y natin yes given trial yp natin which is a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x And then, of course, never forget the sine to x nothing here. Ayan. So, given this um, equation right here, the next thing we need to do is to solve for our undetermined coefficient. In this case, two, no, a and b. So this can be solved by creating two equations because we have two unknowns. And one way to solve this is um, just like what we did in um, our um, previous lessons, the um, partial fraction decomposition, no? wherein we group similar terms and equate them to its equivalent component in the right-hand side. So, we can do that by first looking at, let's say, sine 2x. No? For sine 2x, for sine 2x, let's all group common terms together. We have, we have here um, 4b sine 2x what else 2a sine 2x and then b sine 2x 
So negative 4b minus negative 4 times negative 2 will be plus 8a. And then negative 12 times b sine 2x will give us negative 12b, right? And then equating it to its equivalent component for sine 2x, 1. Okay? Yeah. So in this case, we're going to have um, negative 12b. Negative 12b plus negative 4b. This will become 8a minus 16b equals 1. Let's call this equation one. Okay. All right. Now for the next um, equation, we have um, cosine two x. For cosine two x, we have. Um, we have here this 4a cosine 2x. B. And then negative 12a equals, since we have equivalent, since it has no equivalent on the right-hand side of the equation, then it would be 0. Okay? So combining terms together, we have um, negative 8b minus 16a equals 0. Let's call this equation b. I'm sorry, equation 2. Okay. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. 8a minus 16b equals 1 and negative 8b minus 16a equals 0. How are we going to solve for a and b here? Since we have two equations and two unknowns, this can be computed by systems of linear equations. And one tool that we can utilize to make this happen is our calculator. Yes, our, our calculator is capable of solving simultaneous equations. Okay, so, so this is our calculator, no? And um, so we need to yeah, have two of our equations, this equation, this equation, entered in, no? If I may rearrange this, um, going to have um, 16a we're going to have actually negative 16a minus 8b yeah it's very important no that it is within its respective um, uh, variables or undetermined coefficients para mas madali siyang isolve pag ininputan natin siya sa calculator so let's go to mode uh, mode 5 for equation and then go to um, so obviously meron tayong dalawa dito for linear 1 and 2 no sa mode 1 no two equations and two unknowns yan so yung two unknowns ay x and y so number 2 naman x y z sa so tatlong unknowns tatlong equations so since two equations yung meron tayo and two unknowns so piliin natin yung 1 and then do take note of the uh, form of the equation kasi you will notice here that yung c sub n natin no, is the constant. So yung constant daw nasa right-hand side. So it is um, explicitly um, expressed. No? Yung a sub n x plus b sub n y equals yung constant c sub n. So, so uh, fortunately, yung ating equation ay expressed na sa ganun in, in that manner. Kaya naman, diretsyo na lang natin yung pag a -apply. And we have... 8, if we plug in for equation 1, 8 and then negative 16, and then 1. And then negative 16, and then negative 8, and then 0. Okay? 
our value for x, which is a in our case, will be no. So a in this case will be by calc u no? mode five one. We got the values a to be one over forty. 1 over 40 and b to be negative 1 over 20 negative 1 over 20 all right so now we we have now computed for our undetermined coefficients a and b that's what is our next step yes you got it right that is to plug it in our values. So thus our yp is a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x will now be 1 over 40. cosine 2x and then minus 1 over 20 sine 2x okay and so therefore our y since it's the sum of the homogeneous in the particular solutions will now then be equal to y equals our yh, that's c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x plus cosine 2x over 40 minus sine 2x over 20. Ayan, and that's it. This is our solution. our differential equation okay how about another problem so we have y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y same no equals 2x cubed minus x plus 3 so you know what to do. Sit down in a thinking chair and think. Think. Solution is the sum. The complete solution is the sum of the homogeneous and the particular solution. So we need to figure out what our homogeneous is, which we already have, right? Yh is when f of x is equal to zero. No? And we were able, and we were uh, able to get that already, which is y h equals c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x. So, wala nang problem dyan. But then, the next part is yung challenging part, which is yung getting of the particular solution by means of the method of undetermined coefficients. And that is when f of x is here in this case, 2x cubed minus x plus 3. Ayan. So, meron tayong polynomial function here. And what could be or what would be the form of our yp if that's the case? The form of our yp would then be a plus bx plus cx squared plus d x cubed and okay and so what will be our values for yp our value for yp would then be equal to a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed okay 
moving this, taking the first derivative would give us a, I'm sorry, zero. So since a is considered as a constant, so taking the derivative of this equation here gives zero plus b plus two c x plus three d x squared. Taking another derivative, sub p would give us zero plus derivative then two c x would be two c plus derivative then three d x squared is six d x. All right. Now, substituting this, plugging this in to our given problem, which is y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals 2x cubed minus x plus 3, gives us, okay, let's plug that in, y prime, y double prime expression, 2c plus 6dx, right? Next, we have minus 4, then our y prime equivalent, which is b plus 2cx plus 3dx squared, minus 12, and then you adding y, which is a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed. And then, of course, equating it to our f of x, which is 2x cubed minus x plus 3. Okay. So similarly, since uh, we have here our undetermined coefficients, c d a b c no we seek to answer them or to find them and we can do so by grouping the terms so for nine go for for x cubed no so x cubed x squared x so for x cubed for x cubed meron tayong um to isa lang the x cubed and then meron din tayong counterpart dito, fortunately, which is 2x cubed. In other words, kunin natin sila and we'll get an expression of um, d equals 2. But that's just, that's not just d equals 2 because this will be 12 no? times d. So this will be 12d equals 2. And thus, d equals 1 over 6. Actually, negative 1 over 6. Okay, so may nakuha na tayong isang value for d, the present or na available. Let's now proceed to another variable, and that is for, say, x squared. For x squared, meron tayong um, ito, meron tayong cx squared, meron tayong 3dx squared. So we have negative 4, negative 4 times 3 is 12, negative 12d, and then we have negative 12c, minus 12c equals, meron ba siyang counterpart dito na x squared? Fortunately, wala. So, 0. Ayan. Since alam natin that d is already negative 1, 6, so negative 12 Yan. Negative 12 multiplied by negative 1 over 6 minus 12c equals 0. You can solve for c here and understand that c will be equal to, this is 12 divided by 6 is 2, positive 2. And so transposing it to the other side will give us 12 divided by uh, 2 divided by 12, which is uh, 1, 6 as well, right? So positive and negative, so this would be positive, 1, 6. 1 over 6, positively, right? Yeah.
now. For our next term, we have after na x squared, meron tayong x. So for x, lahat ng merong equivalent uh, values for x will be itong 6dx natin, 2cx, and then bx. And then meron din tayong x here na equivalent. So grouping them all, grouping them all together gives 6d minus 8c no, minus 12b. And then equals negative 1. Right? Equals negative 1. Now combining them together, we know that 6, we know that d is 1 6, right? So this is negative 1 6 minus 8, then multiplied by. 1 over 6 minus 12 b equals negative 1. So solving for b, we'll get this will become negative 1, right? And then this will become 8 over 6, which is um, 4 over 3, 4 thirds. And then transpose it back here and then divide it by 12. b will then be equal to negative 1 over 9. Okay. You can actually confirm that. You can bring out your calculator pag tinatamad mag-compute. No? <laughs> tinatamad mag-compute. Yan. So, kung meron tayong 6, negative 1 over 6, minus 8, quantity 1 over 6, minus 12, and then let that variable be labas natin yung variable na b no? equals negative 1 and then we are solving for b so comma and then b and shift solve yeah. so for b the answer is negative 0 0.111 if you want to get the fractional ex uh, expression Call mo lang yung b and then boom, meron ka negative 1 over 9. Ang cool, di ba? That is why take your calculator seriously because it will help you in many different ways. Okay? So now that we have identified b, of course, let us not leave without looking for yung sa constant natin. For our constant, let's call k. So we have, of course, 2c. We have B, we have A, and meron din siyang equivalence right-hand side, which is 3. So, ang ating equation will be 2C minus 4B minus 12A equals 3. Okay, so again, substituting yung values, 2, and then ano yung ating C? That's 1 sixth, right? Minus 4, and then ano yung B natin? Oh, that's uh, negative 1, 9. And then, of course, 12A equals 3. Then solving for A, bring out again our calculator. No? Kasi tayo ay mga... Masisipag na mag-isip <laughs> kung tinatamad tayong mag-solve. And actually, hindi naman tinatamad. We just want to be sure. Ganun lang tayo. We just want to be sure that even the most basic arithmetic are um, really um, made sure na correct. So, let's bring out our calculator again and let's plug in our values. So, we have 2, then 1, 6, minus 4. And then negative 1 over 9. Right? And then minus 12. And then A. Pwede kang mag-represent ng X if you want. Pwede rin yung letter A mismo. As long as you define that you're solving for 
A. And that is by doing comma and then A. The good thing about doing this is that when you solve for A, you plug it directly. No? You uh, store it directly rather papunta dun sa variable na A. So shift solve. A will give you, okay, so may decimal value. Again, if you want a fractional expression kung meron man, then A would be equal to negative 5 over 27. Negative 5 over 20. Negative 5 over 27. Ayan. Ayan. So, kung susumahin, ano, titignan natin yung mga values na nakuha natin. Ito lahat sila. Yan. Ito lahat sila. So, therefore, thus, no? Our YP, which is A plus BX plus CX, squared plus dx cubed will get, will be equivalent to a which is negative 5 over 27, negative 5 over 27, and then we'll have minus 1 over 9 or x over 9. And then plus, we have x squared over 6, right? Plus, what's sorry, the negative or minus? Minus d or x cubed over 6. Yeah, so pahirap lang sa, sa color, no? But so that you could easily identify that we have plugged that in. And so therefore, getting our general solution, no? We simply have to add, no? Since um, it is the sum of the homogeneous and the particular solution, yh plus yp, and therefore, y equals um, c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x plus, ayan, or simply minus 5 over 27 minus x over 9 plus x squared over 6 minus x cubed over 6. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Here is now our complete or general solution to our differential equation. Okay? All right. So how about the next problem? which is y double prime minus 4y prime minus 12y equals x e raised to 4x. So similar to the previous problems, we need to get yh and yp, and we know already yh from our, our previous um, examples. And yh is actually when f of x equals 0. And we know this already. yh equals c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x. Right? So moving on to the next part, which is getting actually the yp. And that is when f of x is x e to the 4 x and from here we can already identify no by inspection what will be the form of our yp 
And the form of our YP will be what? We have here an polynomial expression and an exponential. So we know that this exponential here, uh, rather, rather this polynomial here, can also be represented as a plus bx, right? And then of course, we copy yung e raised to 4x. So that will be the form of our yp. Okay? So, the, uh, getting our yp, which is a plus bx, and then e raised to 4x, Again, taking the first and second derivatives kasi isa-substitute natin siya back mamaya no? sa ating um, original equation. So we have here uh, a plus bx and then multiplied by e raised to 4x. If you differentiate this, this what, what technique kaya? No? Or how are we going to differentiate these two quantities here? We can actually use yung tinatawag natin product rule. No, yung product rule. And paano yung product rule natin? Kung naalala pa, product rule is actually, no, kung meron kang derivative ng uv, this will become u prime v plus uv prime. Huwag na huwag kakalimutan yan sapagat yan ay lubos nating magagamit sa marami pa nating mga example problems. No? And so, if you take this as u, oh, sorry, if you take this as u and we take this as v, and taking the first derivative muna of a plus bx and then copying e raised to 4x gives us no, um, a plus bx, which will be simply b, no? Kasi derivative ng a plus bx will be b, and then copying e raised to 4x, and then plus, copy naman natin yung a plus bx, and then, differentiating e raised to 4x gives us 4 e raised to 4x. Yeah. Okay? 4 e raised to 4x. Now, how about this one? Um, taking the another derivative of this function naman, what will this give us? No. So, again, uh, product rule. b e raised to 4x. gives us b derivative of b would be I wait yes derivative of b would be well zero so um, derivative of e raised to 4x will give us b and then 4 e raised to 4x and then plus derivative ng a plus vx 4 e raised to 4x is similar to this one and this will give us b e raised to 4x plus a plus bx 4 e raised to 4x. Okay? Yeah. So, yes, e raised to 4x. Mm, I actually forgot 4 here. So this should be 4b. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> expanding our equation, this will give us, um, rearranging lang, no? Organizing 4b e raised to 4x plus, we have 4b e raised to 4x plus, um, quantity a plus bx, this will give us um, a or 4a e raised to 4x and finally 4bx e raised to 4x. We can 
combine this, no? Yung ating dalawang 4 and we'll arrive at an uh, sum of 8b e raised to 4x plus 4a e raised to 4x and then plus 4b x e raised to 4x. Ayun. Now we're now ready to substitute the values. Substituting to our given DE, which is Y double prime minus 4Y prime minus 12Y equals X E to the 4X. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and substitute that. So lang to, no? So... Ano yung y double prime natin? Ito yun. 8be to the 4x plus 4ae to the 4x plus 4bxe to the 4x. So let's substitute. Again natin. 8be to the 4x plus 4ae to the 4x plus 4bxe to the 4x. Minus 4. And then ano yung y prime natin? We have b e to the 4x plus um, 4a e to the 4x plus 4b x e to the 4x. Then minus 12, which is y, no? And that's um, a e to the 4x plus b x e the 4x equivalent to eto x e to the 4x ayun x e the 4x ayan so we have 8 8 here 8 b yeah so if we group yung similar terms together If we group similar terms together, starting with x e to the 4x, no? So, 4 x e to the 4x. This will give us, ano, ano ba yung mga merong expression ng 4, ng may x e to the 4x? Well, ito yun, isa. Isa to. Then, meron tayo ditong 4B. And then, meron din tayo nito. Negative 12B. Okay? And then, of course, X e to the 4X. Ayan. So, equating. Kakaroon tayo ng... We have 4b minus 16b and then minus 12b equals 1. Okay. So 4b minus 16b. Minus 12b. Hmm. Oops, we actually missed something. No? Um, there should be 4 here as well. Yon. So this should be um, 4ab should be um, 8 a e to the 4x and 16 bx e to the 4x so this should be um, 8 b to the 4x 8 a e to the 4x and 16 so this should be um, Should be 8, 
No, and it should be. Oops. Sixteen. Ayon. So this should be sixteen. Yeah. So 16b minus 16b would be equal to 0 and then negative 12 b equals 1. It will give us b equals negative 1 over 12. Ayun. Okay. Now how about 4? Um, ano yung next natin? e to the 4x, no? e to the 4x. So for e to the 4x, we have... We have this one, e to the 4x, e to the 4x, e to the 4x, and then e to the 4x. Ito then e to the 4x pala. Right? Yes. So, for e to the 4x, we have... e to the 4x. 8b plus 8a and then negative 4b minus 16a and then minus 12a and then equals 0. So combining, we have 8 plus 8 is 16 minus 16 is 0. So, minus 12a, and then we have here negative 4b, but we know that b is equivalent to negative 1 over 12 minus 12a equals 0. Okay, so solving for a, we'll actually have 4 over 12 is... Um, one third and twelve over three is equal to no tamad na ako. Alik ko na lang. <laughs> so four, <laughs> four, like or negative four, or basically four over twelve. No, four over twelve minus twelve. A. So, gawain tamad. Pwedeng i <laughs> Equals or pwedeng x na lang para diretso na. Equals 0. And then, solve for x. Yan. x is 1 over 36. Wait. Minus 12a. 4 over 12 minus 12x equals 0. Should be. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I think I spot another um, problem here. Um, this should be 16 this 8 here because 4 times 4 is 16, 16a and then 16b. Ha! Sorry, sorry. So this should be um, 8a or 16. Oops. So this should be 16. It should be 16 here. And so, again, this should be 16. Thankfully, hindi naman affected lahat ng ating equation. Maliban dun sa pangalawa. So, this should be 16a. No. Yan. And this should be 8b plus 16a. Yeah. 
So 16A cancels out. 16A cancels out. And then 8 minus 4B is actually positive 4B. Okay? So, yeah. Yung nakuha natin kanina is positive 1 over 36, right? Pero dapat siya ay negative 1 over 36. 1 over 36. Ayun. Okay. Kasi pagka transpose mo sa kabila yan, yan. Iging positive siya, but may negative ka rito. So, divided by 12. Negative 1 over 36. Alright. So, now, we have identified yung A and B natin, which is our coefficients. We can now get our expression for YP. Thus, YP, since it is equivalent to, um, this is A plus BX. Nakalimutan ko, sorry. <laughs> Ando yung ating form. Yan, A plus BX e raised to 4X. A plus BX e raised to 4X. A plus BX and then e raised to 4X e raised to 4x. And so substituting, we have yp equals a, which is negative 1 over 36. No. And then minus 1 over 12 x. And then e raised to 4x. Ayon. All right. So, therefore, our general solution, which is y equals yh plus yp, gives us y equals c sub 1 e raised to 6x. Sorry. Pagin natin ang kunting space. Angat ko lang onte. No. We have y equals c sub 1 e raised to 6x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x plus or rather minus, no? Okay lang. Factor out ko. Yung negative 1 over 36 minus, no? 1 over 36 Factoring out 1 over 36 will give us 1 plus 3x, then e raised to 4x. Ayun. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our solution for our problem. C1e raised to negative 6x plus C2e raised to negative 2x. Minus 1 over 36, quantity 1 plus 3x, quantity e raised to 4x. All right. Okay. So how about this problem right here? No. So we have here the same, yeah, left-hand side of the equation from, uh, which we already know from examples 1 to 4. Pero dito naman ang ginawa, pinag-add-add no, yung ating equivalent, uh, yung, yung 3 e raised to 5x na nasolve na natin earlier, and then sine 2x, and then x e raised to 4x. So how do we solve for this? no If we have this long uh, expression here, we can actually quantify it and solve individually. For example, three just like what we did in the previous examples, 3 e raised to 5x, and then sine 2x, and then x e to the 4x. Now, by some rule, by some rule, yung uh, rule number 3 natin, we can actually add up all of our uh, previously um, uh, achieved answers, no? And add them all together to get yung ating general solution. In other words, if we're going to go back, no? Since... Uh, solution since we already know since we already know uh, yung yh natin and yh is what um, c sub 1 e raised to 6x and c sub 2 e raised to negative 2x right 
then how do we figure out yung ating particular solution? Well, previously, na-compute na natin siya for 3e raised to 5x, no? For 3e raised to 5x, yung yp natin for 3e raised to 5x, Sige, ganda na lang. For 3e raised to 5x, ang nakuha na nating yp ay negative 3 over 7 e raised to 5x, right? For sine 2x, ang nakuha na nating we already got our value for that as ano nga yung sine 2x natin? Napi ko lang. Ayun. We have um, 1 over 40. No? Yp to be 1 over 40 or cosine 2x over 40 minus sine 2x over 20. Right? And for our x e to the 4x, ang nakuha na nating yp ay for x e to the 4x, we have, ayun, 1 over 36, negative 1 over 36, quantity 1 plus 3x. Then e raised to 4x. So by some rule, uh, all the yps could be added all together. And so we'll generate an, uh, uh, a particular solution of negative 3 over 7 e raised to 5x plus cosine 2x over 40 minus sine 2x over 20. Minus 1 over 36, quantity 1, 1 over 36, quantity 1 plus 3x, then e raised to 4x. Okay? So, yan yung yp natin. Now, for our general solution, no? Our general solution, which is y equals yh plus yp, we simply add them together and live happily ever after. So we have c sub 1, e raised to 6x, plus c sub 2, e raised to negative 2x. And then add this thing all up. No? I'm going to copy this. And paste it here. Yeah. And so... Yan. By some rule, this is our complete solution for our problem as stated above. Okay? Alright. So that's method of undetermined coefficients for you. It's kind of a little bit messy, no? Uh, because um, some algebra might trip us up because of a lot of equations that involve but um, it's a reliable tool, no? Uh, but quite limited because um, available lang siya for polynomial, for exponential, and for sine and cosine. How about tangent, no? How about other um, um, functions, no? So that would be a problem. And what else? For constant coefficients lang, um, uh, po pwede ang method of undetermined coefficients. But for functions, uh, for other functions, no, na as variables, for variable coefficients, yun yung magiging problema kung gagamitin natin yung MUC kasi hindi siya po pwede. And so, what would be, no, another technique that could be used to solve non-homogeneous linear differential equations na merong variable coefficients? The technique 
that we use or employ to solve those are what we call the method of variation of parameters. No? Now, while the method of uh, the undetermined coefficients reduce DEs to be solvable by algebra, it can be, yeah, as you may notice, little tedious. It is also limited to work on a few functions. A more general method or technique that can be used to solve many more cases is the method of variation of parameters. And paano itong method of variation of parameters? Well, the method of variation of parameters was invented by Jean Lagrange in 1774. Ang advantage nito ay this method can be applied to any non-homogeneous differential equations, no matter what the coefficients and functions are. No, So, maganda yung method na ito. Applicable to all. Method of undetermined coefficients involve differentiation. No, kung, kung ang MUC, puro differentiation, derivatives, ang method of variation of parameters naman ay puro integration. Now, there are several disadvantages no, of variation of parameters. In contrast with MUC, yung ating variation of parameters, the homogeneous solution is required. No? Alala ulit kung ano homogeneous uh, solution, yung when f of x is equal to 0. So, kailangan makuha natin yung yh. No? Required siya to find a particular solution. Bakit sir, sa MUC, required din naman. Ha? Actually, pwede mong hindi nakunin yung uh, yung yh part kung gusto mo lang makuha yung yp na part so independent sila with each other pero of course kung gusto mo kunin yung complete solution yung general solution kailangan mong kunin pati yung homogeneous solution ang point lang nito ay para makuha mo yung particular solution sa method of variation of parameters kailangan mong makuha yung yh yung homogeneous solution okay now to execute successfully Integration is required a required process with no guarantee that integration is possible for some functions. Now, while it will always be possible to write down a formula to get the particular solution, we may not be able to actually find it if the integrals are too difficult or if we are unable to find the complementary or the homogeneous solution. So, in that case, na yung integration natin ay walang equivalent, uh, what they do, what, what uh, is usually done is that it is simulated and or computed by a, a computer uh, simulation tool, for example, or computing tool, for example, uh, MATLAB, no? Maple, and the others. So, dito naman, hindi naman natin ma-encounter yun, yung sobrang hirap na hindi kayang integrate. We'll just touch on the basics just to give you an idea. So how does this work? No? Lagrange's idea was basically to seek solutions of the form y sub p equals u sub 1 plus u sub 2 y sub 2, where yung y sub 1 and y sub 2, alam natin yan, this form the fundamental set of solutions. Ngayon, ano yung u1 and u2. Yung u1 and u2 are the unknown functions that needs to be determined. Okay? So, uh, the basic idea really in this method of variation of parameters is quite similar, no? Doon sa method na ginamit ni the Allenbert for reduction of order. If you will recall, yung ginawa natin doon sa isang lesson natin wherein uh, for the real and repeated roots, no, we were able to get an expression such that the um, uh, value, pag nag-re-repeat yung, yung roots ay merong x uh, nag increase din yung, yung kanyang degree. For example, kung twice repeated, eh di a plus bx, kung thrice, eh di a plus bx plus cx squared, and so on and so forth. So, uh, it is quite similar no dito sa variation of parameters na ginawa ni Lagrange. Now, to determine u sub 1 and u sub 2, we must consider yung ating standard form ng ating uh, second order linear differential equation as a start, no? as a launching pad. So let's consider y double prime plus p of x y prime plus p of x y equals f of x 
where of course p of x, u of x, and f of x are continuous functions. Ngayon, alam na natin that the general solution ng second order linear differential equation ay y equals c sub 1, y sub 1, plus c sub 2, y sub 2 by principle of superposition. And this is true for the corresponding homogeneous equation wherein uh, yung ating standard form, yung f of x niya ay equal to 0, itong ating right-hand side of the equation right here. No? So, do take note no, of this uh, standard form because we will be assuming here that the coefficient of y double prime is 1. No? 1 ang coefficient niya. And this will be our standard no, in solving um, variation of parameters. So, if that's not the case, and the equation is not in standard form, sa ganitong form, ibig sabihin, wala siyang coefficient here. So kung nari, kung merong coefficient ka rito, let's say x squared, you need to divide x squared to the whole equation. No? Kasi kung merong kang coefficient dyan, that's a general form. So you need to transform it into its standard form. Okay? So just divide the whole equation by the coefficient of y double prime because what we seek is and at the standard form of it, wherein walang uh, isolated so y double prime, wala siyang coefficient. The coefficient is equal to 1. And we'll illustrate this in a sample problem later. No? So, replacing y equals c sub 1, y sub 1, plus c sub 2, y sub 2, yung ating general solution kanina, with, okay, with u1, y1, plus u2, y2, Tapos, solving y double prime plus p of x, y prime, u of x, y equals f of x. Ibig sabihin, kung ito na yung ating, general solu kung ito na yung ating solution no, for our, in solving our uh, second order linear differential equation, edi, we need to take the first derivative of this and the second derivative and then plug it back in this equation here to be able to get an expression and solve for u1 and u2, Right? So, ang difference niya with the, vari with the method of uh, undetermined coefficients, yung c1 and c2 natin are not just uh, numerical uh, constants. Yung u1 and u2 here are, con are functions. No? Kaya, ang kaya ang tawag sa method ay variation of parameters because we are uh, looking for u1 and u2 such that because they are functions. No? They are functions and not just constants. Now, to further illustrate no, how this, how the process of uh, the variation of par parameters work, here's an il illustrative example. So let us derive a general solution of the second order linear differential equation. F, uh, y double prime plus p of x y prime plus u of x y equals f of x. Using Lagrange's y equals u sub 1 c sub 1 plus u sub 2 c sub 2. Okay, so solution. Drive natin yung general solution using variation of parameters. Sabi natin, ang solution natin ay y equals u sub 1, y equals u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2. Now, if we're going to uh, substitute that to our given de here, then we need to take the first and second derivatives of this y, right? So y, since this y here, no, yung u1 at u2 are not anymore constants. They are functions. That is why, kung meron kang u1 at y1 na both function, if we differentiate them, we need to do product rule. Yon. And if we do product rule, then what happens? Magkakaroon tayo ng u1 prime and then y1 plus, kabila naman, no? u1 and then y1 prime. And then sa kabila naman, this one, u2, no? We have u2 prime y2 plus u2 and then y2 prime. So by product rule, yan sila. Now, pag nag-differentiate ka uli, no, ng isa pa dito, second derivative, medio tedious, no, kasi 
ang haba na naman ito. Madodoble lang ito. No? And to make our differentiation easier, we're going to make an assumption that whatever u1 and u2 will be, it will be satisfied by this condition. So, ano yung condition na ating i-apply? To make, sige, to make differentiation easier. To make differentiation easier, we're going to make an assumption that whatever u1 and u2 will be, it will be satisfied by this condition. At ano yung condition na yun? It's this condition. u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equals 0. Okay? Let's call this equation A. So, ibig sabihin, yung u1, y1 plus u2, y2, para mapadali lang yung differentiation natin, no? ito yung condition na ating um, gagawin o gagamitin, yung assumption natin. That u1 prime y1 plus u sub 2 prime y2 equals 0. That is why, if we're going to um, rearrange yung ating y prime, magkakaroon tayo ng applying this condition here, magkakaroon tayo ng y prime equals rearranging, ano? Rearranging. Magkakaroon tayo ng y prime equals Pagsamahin natin yung u sub 1 prime, y1 plus u sub 2, y2 prime. Magkakaroon tayo ng expression as, ba ito yung ating u sub 1, u sub 1, y1, then plus u sub 2 prime, y2 Anong matitira sa atin dito? Sa kabila. So ang kinuha natin ito, u sub 1 prime y1 and then u sub 2 prime y2. Ang matitira sa atin ay ito, u sub 1 y1 prime and then u sub 2 y2 prime. So ito 'yon. Rearrange lang natin, u sub 1 y1 prime plus u sub 2, y 2 prime. Yan. Pero sabi natin, yun nga, ang assumption natin to make differentiation easier is u sub 1 prime y1 plus u sub 2 prime y2 equals 0. So makatuwid, ito ay magiging equal to 0. Kaya ang ating magiging y1 ay, ano, or rather y prime, ay magiging ito na lamang. u sub 1, y1 prime, plus u sub 2, y 2 prime. Now, mas madali na siyang kuha na ng second deriv uh, derivative no? to differentiate it again dahil magkakaroon tayo ng expression as the following. No? We have by product rule again, no? magkakaroon tayo ng u sub 1 prime then copy si y1 prime plus ko lang to dito no u sub 1 prime y sub 1 prime plus copy natin si u sub 1 and then ang differentiate naman natin ay si y sub 1 prime so the double prime na siya no what else so ito yung una 
of course, plus. Ito yung pangalawa. We have u sub 2 prime. Then copy si y sub 2. Plus. And then copy si u sub 2. And then derivative ni. Actually, this is. Yeah. Derivative ni y sub 2 prime. Is y sub 2 double prime. Yan. Actually, prime din to. Yan. Okay. Please stick with me. Medyo nakakalito lang sa una. Pero kung masusundan nyo yung solution, we will arrive later at a wonderful solution. So, kompleto na tayo. Ano? Meron na tayong y. Ito yung y natin. u1, y1, u2, y2. Ito yung y prime natin. u1, y1 prime plus u2, y2 prime. Baba ko to para. Oops. Hindi nakakalito. Yan. And then, we have y double prime equals u sub 1, y, u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 prime plus u sub 1, y sub 1 double prime. No? Plus u sub 2 prime, y sub 2 prime plus u sub 2, y sub 2 double prime. Okay? Yan. So... Yan. Alright, now what's next? No? Nakuha na natin yung components natin for y, y prime, and y double prime. What we need to do is to substitute. Substitute. Substituting dun sa ating equation, substituting for yung problem, uh, standard form nga natin, substituting to y prime plus y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x, y equals f of x, no? We're gonna get the following. Substitute natin, no? So, ano yung y double prime natin? Ito yung y double prime natin. Ito yon, no? So, we have u sub 1 prime y sub 1 prime plus u sub 1 y sub 1 double prime plus itong u sub 2 prime y sub 2 prime plus u sub 2 y sub 2 double prime oops okay lang okay lang palitan ko lang ng color u sub 2 prime, y sub 2 prime, no? plus u sub 2, y sub 2 double prime. Okay? Yan. And then plus p of x, P of x, um, ano yung y prime natin? Yung y prime natin ay itong si u1 y prime plus u2 y, y2 prime. So, this will be u1 y prime plus u2 y2 prime. Tama? u1 y1 prime plus u2 y2 prime. Okay? And then plus q of x. What is our y? Yung y nga natin is si u sub 1 y sub 1 plus u sub 2 y sub 2. And that is equivalent to f of x. Medyo mahaba, no? Yan. Now, rearranging this will result to this will result to factoring out natin, factoring uh, u1 and u2 will get um, an expression of u1 and then y double prime sub 1 plus p of x no 
y sub 1 prime plus q of x y sub 1 plus u sub 2 plus u sub 2 y sub 2 double prime plus p of x y sub 2 prime y sub 2 prime plus q of x y sub 2 okay and then finally plus yung constant part pinagsama-sama natin magkakaroon tayo ng u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime which is equal to yung f of x natin. So what we basically did is we rearranged this. So after ma-substitute natin lahat, nirearrange lang natin to this, no? For us to see, no, that since yung assumption natin, dito natin magagamit yung ating condition to make our um, uh, equation easier, no? And simpl uh, simpler. So since Since, sabi natin, uh, the homogeneous solution, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y equals 0, then, yung ating condition kanina, yung u1 y prime, then, uh, then what will happen to our equation? If this is uh, the ho our solution for homogeneous equation, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y equals 0, then what will happen here no, to u1 and u2? They will become 0. Ayun. So itong part na to, y, y double prime 1, p of x, y prime plus q of x, y, since nasabi natin yung homogeneous solution is equal to 0, then this will become 0. This whole here will become 0. As well as, this expression here then what will be left of us is only this equation and which is u sub 1 prime y sub 1 y sub 1 prime plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 prime equals f of x no let's call this equation b Yon, equation B. So, meron na tayong two equations, no? Yung equation A natin, which is yung assumed natin, the condition which is y sub 1 prime, y, uh, u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 plus u sub 2 prime, y sub 2 equals 0. And then, yung ating second equation is u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 prime plus u sub 2 prime, y sub 2 prime equals f of x. Okay. Now, equation A and equation B will form a system of two linear algebraic expressions. Lagay ko siya dito, no? No. So, equation A and equation B. And equation B will form two linear algebraic equations. Ano yung mga yun? Yun nga, yung u sub 1 prime y sub 1 plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 equals 0. Ito equation A. And then ito equation B. U, ito yun, no? u sub 1 prime y sub 1 prime plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 prime equals f of x. Hmm, okay. Now, what happens? If we want to solve for, since I'm interested, we're interested to find for u sub 1 and u sub 2. Ito yun, u sub 1 and u sub 2. Kaso naka-prime pa siya, ibig sabihin naka-derivative pa siya. If we are interested to, to find kahit yung u sub 1 prime pa lang, para makuha kasi natin yung u sub 1, alam natin, 
to get u sub 1, we need to integrate yung ating u sub 1 prime, right? For us to get u sub 1. Duh. So, um, the, the question here, kung ito yung ating working equation or to, uh, system of uh, solution for our uh, given uh, equation, for our given equation, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus u of x, y equals f of x. Then, ang tanong is, paano natin makukuha si u sub 1 prime and si u sub 2 prime? In other words, itong part na to. No? Itong part na to at itong part na to. How are we going to get this? One method, since sila ay system of linear equation, pwede ka mag-substitution, pwede ka mag-elimination, but there's another method no, that we will be employing for us to solve this system of linear equation. And that is by using Kramer's rule. No? Kramer's rule. So, paano natin gagamitin yung Kramer's rule na yun? So, going back here. So, solving for u1 and u2, ito yung nakuha natin two equations kanina, di ba? u sub 1 prime y sub 1 plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 equals to 0. And then u sub 1 prime y sub 1 prime u sub 2 prime y sub 2 prime equals f of x. Now, paano natin solve yung part na to? Itong u, u sub 1 prime at saka u sub 2 prime. We're gonna use a technique called from your algebra, Kramer's rule. Naalala pa ba? Yung Kramer's rule is like this. Kung meron kang system of equations, for example, meron kang... 2x plus y plus z equals 3, tsaka x minus y minus z equals 0, and x plus 2y plus z equals 0. Pwede mo silang i-express itong system of equations mo to a matrix, no? To determine the determinant. Okay? Paano natin itatranslate yun? Itong lahat na nasa loob, nasa left-hand side ng equation, ito yung tinatawag na uh, coefficient matrix determinant. So, yung coefficient niya, 2, 1, 1. Ito yung 2, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, tsaka 1, 2, 1, and 1, 2, 1. Whereas, ito yung tinatawag natin column or answer column. Answer column, 3, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0. So, kung gusto mong hanapin yung value for x, for example, dx, no? Para makuha mo yung value ng x, eh di, ang gawin mo, ipalit mo yung answer column papunta dun sa column ng interested, uh, value mo or coefficient. In this case, if that is x, no, then replace the x column by the answer column. So, dati ito yun, ano? 2, 1, 1. Ito yung determinant, no? Ang ginawa, itong column na to, pinalitan ng 3, 0, 0. Kaya, meron kang 3, 0, 0, then 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, tsaka 1. So, in, in a similar manner, that is what we're going to do to solve for u sub 1 and u sub 2. Papalitan natin yung column ng matrix, no? Nung u sub 1 and u sub 2 with the answer column. Okay? So, review ng Kramer's rule. Now, solving u sub 1 and u sub 2 by Kramer's rule, then we will be arriving at this expression. Okay? Hindi ko na masyadong ipapakita yung nitty-gritty. Uh, please review yung derivation if you are interested. Pero basically, kung sususugan mo lang yung Kramer's rule, makukuha mo na siya. Kasi, kung ito yung equation mo, no, at kinuha mo yung uh, determinant or yung u sub 1 mo, no, makukuha mo yung value ng u sub 1 mo kapag kinuha mo yung d u sub 1 over d. Where d is yung determinant mo. And yung determinant mo, yung determinant mo is basically this uh, part here, yung nasa left-hand side mo, which is yung y sub 1, y sub 1 prime, y sub 2, and y sub 2 prime. Now, kung interested kang hanapin yung u sub 1, edi palitan mo yung u sub 1 column ng answer column mo, which is 0 f of x. Kaya ito yung nandito. Now, kapag kakinuha mo yung determinant nga niya, alam natin yung uh, operation is 0 times y 2 prime, no? y sub 2 prime, minus, so cross multiply, no? 0 minus f of x y2. Kaya meron tayong negative kasi 0. No? This is actually 0 minus f of x y2. Yan. Kasi 0 times y2 prime minus, so cross multiply. And then, yan. Ganon. 
Kaya nakakuha tayo ng negative f of x and then y2. Now, interestingly, yung determinant mo here, y sub 1, y sub 2, and then y sub 1 prime and y sub 2 prime is actually uh, similar to another concept that it, we have learned from our previous lesson, which is the Ronskian of the function. Ayun. So, mapapansin nyo, kung ito yung solution, fundamental solutions ng uh, equation mo, y sub 1, y sub 2, tas kinuha mo yung derivatives niya sa baba, no? Then, edi eh, kinukuha mo yung Ronskian niya. So, for us to be able to find yung u sub 1 prime natin, then we have to divide the u sub 1 over d, the determinant. So, executing this, magkakaroon tayo ng negative uh, f of x, y2, and then yung Ronskian niya, no? Yung Ronskian niya. So, this is true for a second order linear differential equation. Okay? Ganon din sa u sub 2, no? Ang dito naman, ang mapapansin nyo, yung ating answer column, 0 and f of x, ang ipinalit ay yung dito sa column ng u sub 2. No? That is why, pagka nag-cross multiply ka dyan to determine your determinant, you will have y sub 1 f of x minus y sub 1 prime times 0. So since cancel out na to, ang matitira na lang ay f of x at saka y sub 1. Over d, yung determinant mo, which is also your Ronskian. Okay? Are you following? Now, finally, integrating to get u sub 1 and u sub 2. Yan. Since ito talaga yung hinahanap natin, no? For our particular solution, then integrating u sub 1 prime is just basically integrating yung nakuha nating value kanina, which is negative f of x, y2, and then the rons again. Ganun din dun sa u sub 2. That would be the integral of u sub 2 prime and the integral of f of x, y sub 1 times the ron scan. Mapapansin nyo, no? Kung ito u sub 1, yung y, su yung y mo, y sub 2. Kung ito ay u sub 2, yung y mo ay y sub 1. Well, this is for second order linear differential equation. Parang, ano lang ba? Memory technique, no? Na different siya. And then, u sub 1 is negative. No? U sub 2 is positive. Now, pag, uh, if we put it all together to get the general solution, then we will be able to get u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2. Hence, we'll have y equals uh, yung nakuha nating value for y sub 1, which is uh, negative f of x over the Ronskian times y2, and then multiplied by itong part na to, y1. Yan. This y1 here, this y1 here. And then this part here is u sub 2, and then multiplied by y sub 2. Now, this is true, no? For... This is true for um, second order linear differential equation. So, kung babasin mo, second order, so meron kang two fundamental solutions. Paano kung higher order or nth order? Yan. Medyo interesting na to, no? Kasi lumalawak na yung magiging matrix natin here and yung ating system of linear equations. So, for nth order system of solutions, this would then be equal to y u sub 1 prime y sub 1 plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 until u sub n prime y sub n. Mapapansin mo, no? Kung mapapansin mo. Yung u sub 1 mo ay uh, consistent siya, no? Na u sub 1 prime all throughout. And then u sub 2 prime all throughout. u sub n prime all throughout. Ang nagbabago ay yung y sub 1. Kasi yung y sub 1 mo, nadi-differentiate nang nadi-differentiate. So u sub 1, u sub 1 prime, u sub 1 double prime. Until u sub, uh, until y sub uh, n, n minus 1. Yun. Y sub n, n minus 1. Now, also, for higher order, you know, system of solutions for variation of parameters, so, dun sa pinakadulo lang, yung uh, f of x malalagay. So, lahat sila 0, 0, 0, 0 until ma-reach yung pinakadulo. So, for example, kung second order yung di mo, Second order, for example, ay y double prime. No? Hindi makakaasa ka na 2 by 2 yung matrix mo. At yung system of equations mo would be u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub y sub 1 prime, y sub 2 equals 0. Tapos u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 prime, plus u sub 1 prime, y sub 2 prime equals f of x. So, sa hanggang pangalawa, doon lilitaw yung f of x. Paano kung fourth order siya? Fourth order. E di magkakaroon ka ng um, mag-i-increase to, no? Kasi 
magkakaroon ka ng u sub 1 prime y sub 3 plus um, u, mali, 3 pala to. Actually, dapat this is 2. 2, and then 2, kuha nyo naman siguro yung pattern, plus u sub 3, y sub 3 prime, u sub 4 prime, y sub 4 prime. Ah, y sub 4 lang. And then, mapapansin nyo, magdi-differentiate siya ng magdi-differentiate hanggang sa makarating siya sa n minus 1, which is third derivative, u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 double prime, hanggang sa last na u sub 1 prime, y sub 1 triple prime. Okay? So, and so on, so forth. So, makakabuo ka ng four systems of equation, or four equations, no? Here. At kung hanggang saan yung dulo, in this case, ito yun, doon ka lang magkakaroon ng lahat to magiging equal to zero, equal to zero, equal to zero. Pero pagdating dito sa dulo, dito yung f of x mo. Ayun. Okay? So, that's uh, the order, for nth order, system of solutions. So, in solving yung ating, representing yung u sub uh, i natin, kung yan man uh, ay mapa 0 to infinity, where i is, yun nga, 1, 2, 3, until n. So, solving this by Kramer's rule, so this is a generic, no? Uh, u sub i, ito yung hinahanap kasi natin. And letting w i be the resulting determinant to be replaced by the ith column of the Ronskian with the answer column, yung answer column natin, yung, di ba, kung ito yung determinant mo, tapos meron ka pa dito, ito yung answer column natin, di ba? So, i-replace daw natin yun. Replace the ith column by the, uh, of the Ronskian with the answer column if you want to find out yung ith column. And then, factoring out f of x, uh, wi, factoring out f of x, wi can be written as, yan, this expression. So, the Ronskian or the determinant, no? Or this factor here, wi, ito yung ating pinaka-solution pagka higher order, no? Where i nga would be from 1, 2, 3 until n. So for example, kung ang um, order ng di mo is third order, so that's uh, n is equal to 3, eh di makakaasa ka na meron ka dapat tatlo na u, u sub 1, u sub 2, and then u sub 3. Right? Kasi ang general solution yan, y would be equal to u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2, plus u sub 3, y sub 3. At gusto nating malaman itong u sub 1, u sub 2, at saka u sub 3. Now, paano mo malalaman yan? Well, uh, the answer is the integral of f of x all over yung Ronskian. Kung tatlo yan, edi y sub 1, y sub 2, and then y sub 3. Right? Multiplied by itong wi. Ano yung wi? Ito yun, no So, paano mo siya uh, lilikhain yung wi? Well, yung matrix, pagka yan ay w kung tatlo yan, no? makakaasa ka na yung mula dun sa system of linear equations mo, no? uh, bubuo ka ng, di ba ito yung y, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, and then yung derivatives niya, y sub 1 prime, y sub 2 prime, y sub 3 prime, and then y sub 1 double prime, y sub 2 double prime, and y sub 3 double prime. And then meron kang answer column, right? Here. So yung answer column mo, yun yung ipapalit mo sa kung anong gusto mong hanapin. Kunwari kung 1 yan, edi ito yung ipapalit mo dito. Kung 2 yan, edi ito yung papalit mo. Edi kung 3 yan, yung answer column yung ipapalit mo to be able to get yung u3, u1, or even u2. Okay? So, medyo nakakalito lang ng kaunti, pero later on, I think, uh, magkiklik ito sa inyo. So, the solution can thus be written as, yan, u sub 1 equals integral of u sub 1 prime equals integral of f of x, the Ronskian y sub 1, y sub 2, uh, times uh, w1, and then u2, uh, would be f of x, y sub 1, y sub 2, w2, and then so on and so forth. In other words, uh, 
in a generic sense, u sub n no, can be expressed as u sub n prime equals the integral of f of x all over the Ronskian of y sub 1, y sub 2 until y sub n multiplied by the w sub n. Now, to get the solution, therefore, uh, of the nth order would be this expression. y equals u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2, until u sub n, y sub n. So kapag kakinuha natin yung general solution, edi i-plug in mo lang yung nakuha mong value for u sub 1 here, and then y sub 1, u sub 2 here, and then y sub 2, and then u sub 3 if ever, or u sub n, and then multiplied by y sub n. And that will be your general solution. Okay? So, ito na yung general solution. Sa method of undetermined coefficients, di ba? yh plus yp yung general solution. Dito sa variation of parameters, ito na yung general solution. u sub 1 y1 plus u sub 2 y2 plus until u sub n yn. Now, baka medyo nalilito pa kayo, but here's our strategy no, for solving the non-homogeneous uh, higher order linear differential equation via variation of parameters. So, uh, first, determine yh, no? Uh, because yung yh, doon tayo magdedepende para makuha yung ating um, y, uh, y components, y sub 1, y sub 2. Next is to determine yp, and then check if the d is expressed in standard form. Pag na-check mo na na naka-standard form siya, i-identify mo lang yung f of x, y sub 1, y sub 2, until y sub n, and then yung Ronskian mo, Yung Ronskian mo would depend kung ilan yung y na available sa'yo. So kung third order yan, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. Kung fourth order yan, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, y sub 4, etc. Gets? And then yung ith Ronskian mo. Now, after that, find u1 and u2 and un. And then uh, add it together to form the general solution. Okay? So I think it this would be better appreciated, no? Uh yung concept that we have learned through some sample problems. Alright, so example number six. So, let x, x cubed be the fundamental solutions of the non-homogeneous DE x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 3y equals 4x raised to 7. So we are asked to solve for the general solution of the differential equation of the non-homogeneous DE. All right. So this case, no, we can't obviously use method of undetermined coefficients here because you will notice na yung coefficients ng y double prime, ng y prime, at saka ng y ay hindi constant coefficient, kundi variable coefficient. So, solving this solution, no? again, we can quantify this by first identifying yung ating yh, right? yh. What is our yh in this case? No? Our homogeneous solution is actually equal to yh no? is equal to c sub 1, y sub 1, plus c sub 2, y sub 2. Okay? Now, paano natin makukuha yung ating homogeneous solution? Uh, binanggit naman doon sa example natin that x and x cubed are fundamental solutions of the non-homogeneous DE. Sa makatawid, yung x could be y1 and yung x cubed could be y2 or interchangeably. No? So in other words, makukuha kagad natin yung yh natin which is c sub 1 x no? plus c sub 2 and then x cubed. Right? So yan yung ating homogeneous solution as fast as that. Kasi given naman nga yung fundamental solutions daw. Of course, next is, ito na yung medyo matugo and challenging. Getting the particular solution for using variation of parameters. Paano natin gagawin yun? We know that yp is 
u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2. Wherein, yung u sub 1 and u sub 2 yung ating determine. And as already derived, we have already understood that u sub 1 is actually equivalent to the integral of f of x, negative f of x, all over the Ronskian of y sub 1 and then y sub 2 multiplied by y sub 2 and that yung ating u sub 2 can be computed as we have already derived to be f of x all over the Ronskian of y sub 1 and y sub 2 multiplied by y sub 1. Now, I recommend na hindi nyo siya i-memorize. Rather, be familiar with the equation kung paano siya na-derive. Um, in, in that order, you'll be able to solve for u1 and u2 at any order. So, pag nakuha mo naman yung principle, madali mo na siyang makukuha at ma-derive. So, since second order naman to, medyo madali lang siyang i-memorize. Pero pag higher order na, yun na yung medyo challenging. No? That is why, kailangan familiar ka din doon sa process. Now, uh, first, um, in order for us to get u1 and u2, check muna natin yung ating equation if it is in standard form. No? Naka-standard form ba yung ating equation? If our equation is x cubed, y double prime, minus 3xy prime, plus 3y equals 4x raised to 7. Clearly, hindi pa siya in uh, our standard form. Kasi merong coefficient yung ating y double prime. Kailangan natin tanggalin yun. And we can do that by dividing it with in, uh, to the whole equation. So let us divide x cubed the whole equation. So for standard form, no, dividing this by, by x cubed, we will be getting an expression of y double prime minus 3 over x squared y prime plus 3 over x cubed y equals 4 x raised to 7 minus, actually 2 pala to, hindi in the cubed no so this should be 3 over x and then this should be 3 over x squared x squared y and then equal to 4x raised to 5 because 7 minus 2 is 5 ayan it's already in standard form. Bakit natin siya in-express in standard form? Kasi mas madali nating ma-identify kung ano yung ating mga ninanais na components para ma-solve natin yung u1 natin. At ano na yung mga yun? We need f of x, we need the Ronskian, we need y1 and y2. Okay? So let's identify. What is f of x? After expressing, kaya important na naka-express siya into standard form. Because hindi pa pala yung 4x to the 7 yung f of x natin, kundi 4x raised to 5. So our f of x is 4x raised to 5. Ano-ano pa yung kailangan natin to solve this equation? Ano yung mga sangkap na kailangan natin? Well, kailangan natin ma-identify kung ano yung y1 and y2. Ano ba yung y1 at ano yung y2? Yung y1 natin, simply by inspecting dito sa ating homogeneous equation, may kita natin that y1 is actually yung x natin. Given naman din siya dun sa problem, sa statement. And so, yung y1 natin is x, whereas yung y2 natin is, yes, x cubed. Alright, malapit na. no So, may y1 na tayo, may y2 na tayo, ito na lang, kulang yung Ronskian niya. So, for the Ronskian, the Ronskian of y sub 1, y sub 2, would be getting the determinants of, ano yung y sub 1 natin? x and x cubed. Ayan. So, ano yung Ronskian natin? 
y sub 1, y sub 2, tsaka y sub 1 prime and y sub 2 prime. So, differentiating yung nandito sa first row will give us um, 1 and then 3x squared. Okay? And then getting the determinant will give us, so cross multiply, no? Cross multiply, paano yung uh, process nito? Multiply here, and then minus yung sa taas. Okay? So, yan. So therefore, this will become 3x squared multiplied by x minus 1 times x cubed. Okay? This will result to 3x cubed minus x cubed. This will be 2x cubed. Ayun. So, ito yung ating Ronskian. Y sub 1 and y sub 2. Yan. Okay. So, medyo kompleto na yung ating mga sangkap, no? Sapagkat pwede na nating ma-substitute yung mga yan doon sa ating solution or formula that we have derived from u sub 1 and u sub 2. Okay? So, let's now solve for u sub 1 and u sub 2. So, so solving for u sub 1, or, so ko na lang. u sub 1, sige. Solving for u sub 1 and u sub 2, kakaroon tayo ng, since sabi natin, u sub 1 is equivalent to the integral of um, negative f of x all over the Ronskian y sub 1 and y sub 2. Multiplied by y sub 2. Ito, again, nakuha natin nung na-derive na natin siya kanina. Okay? And so, plugging in our values, magkakaroon tayo ng negative integral of, ano yung f of x natin? Ito, 4x raised to 5. So, we have 4x raised to 5 all over yung Ronskia natin, which is 2x cubed and then multiplied by yung ating y sub 2, which is x cubed. Of course, dx. Okay? So, medyo madali lang to, dahil algebra lang to. 4x raised to 5 over 2x raised to 3. Actually, x cubed cancels out. No? x cubed cancels out. And then 4 divided by 2 equals... 2, so therefore, magkakaroon tayo ng negative 4, integral of x raised to 5 dx. So simplifying, magkakaroon tayo ng negative 4, x raised to 6 over 6. And hence, u sub 1 equals negative 4 over 6 or negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. Actually, 4 over 2 pala is 2. No? 4 over 2 is 2. Sorry. Sorry about that. 4 over 2 is 2. So, this will be... Um, 2 divided by 6 is... Well, 1 third. So, this will become negative x raised to 6 all over 3. Ayan. So, meron na tayo nung una nating u sub 1. No? So, now... Let's look for our u sub 2. For our u sub 2, it's the integral of f of x all over the Ronskian y sub 1, y sub 2, and then multiplied by y sub 1. So plugging in our values, we have the integral of ano yung f of x natin. That's 4x raised to 5 all over um, our Ronskian, which is 2x cubed, multiplied by our y1, which is x. Ayan. 
So simplifying. Magkakaroon tayo ng um, 4 over 2 is actually 2. And then integral of x raised to 5 over x raised to 3 is x raised to 2 times x is x cubed. Right? Yan. We have 2x cubed, which is equivalent to 2x raised to 4 over 4. Or we have um, x raised to 4 over 2. Ayan. That's our value for u2. So, medyo kompleto na tayo. Thus, no? Yung particular solution natin, yp equals u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2, would then be equal to, what is our u sub 1? That's negative x raised to 6 over 3, multiplied by, what's our y sub 1? That's our x, right? Plus, aning u sub 2 natin? That's x raised to 4 over 2 multiplied by ano yung u sub 2 natin? A y sub 2, that's x cubed. Correct? So we can further simplify this and this will be equivalent to x negative x raised to 7 over 3 plus x raised to 7 over 2 which is all equivalent to yp to b um, x raised to 7 over 6. Ayan. Okay? X raised to 7 over 6. Na yung may yp na tayo, may yh din tayo, then pwede na natin makuha yung ating general solution. So same lang din sa method of undetermined coefficients. Therefore, no? Therefore, Since the general solution is the homogeneous solution and the particular solution, then we will be able to arrive at an equation as c sub 1, x, ito yung homogeneous kanina, plus c sub 2, x cubed, and yung yp na nakuha natin, which is x raised to 7 over 6. Yan. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our solution for this homogeneous DE. Okay? Yon. Let's take a look at another example. Okay. So solve the DE y double prime minus y prime minus 2y e raised to 3x. So solution. So, pag hindi in-indicate kung ano klaseng solution yung hinihingi, always assume na siya ay general solution. At least in our class. Y equals, the general solution is YH plus YP. Right? And so, if you want to solve for YH, no? We know that YH is the homogeneous solution, C sub 1, Y sub 1 plus c sub 2, y sub 2. In this case, hindi natin alam yung y sub 1 at y sub 2. But pwede ba natin siya malaman? Yes. Because this is a second order linear differential equation na may constant coefficients, we can actually solve for y sub 1 and y sub 2. At paano yun? We can first get the characteristic equation. Ito characteristic equation. m squared minus m minus 2 equals 0. No? Again, this is when f of x is for our equation. When f of x is equal to 0. So, nakuha na natin yung ating characteristic equation. What is next? Yes, we bring out our beloved calculators. 
and go to mode mode 5 and then 3 and then plug in yung ating co if con uh, constant coefficients 1 negative 1 negative 2 and boom we have 2 and negative 1 as our roots so meron tayong m equals set of 2 and negative 1 na roots now this 2 and negative 1 here are obviously const uh, are obviously um, real and repeated no so 2 and negative 1 So therefore, kung yan ay real and repeated, makakaasa tayo na yung ating homogeneous solution will be C sub 1, E, since case 1 ito, E raised to 2x, plus C sub 2, E raised to negative x. Okay? Yan. So meron na tayong YH. Now, let's move on to the next part, which is YP. The particular solution, which is by variation of parameters, equivalent to U sub 1, Y sub 1, plus U sub 2, Y sub 2. Okay? So, how do you solve this? Alam natin na yung ating, since uh, we have already derived yung equation natin for u sub 1 and u sub 2, and that is u sub 1 equals the integral of negative f of x all over the Ronskian of y1 and y2 multiplied by y sub 2. And then we have u sub 2 to be the integral of f of x all over the Ronskian of y sub 1 and y sub 2 multiplied by y sub 1. Of course, dx. Okay. So, next is we need to identify kung siya ay naka-standard form na. Siya ba ay naka-standard form? Yes, naka-standard form na siya. No? Kasi yung ating y double prime, 1 naman yung kanyang coefficient. So, check na tayo dyan. Next, identify natin yung f of x natin. f of x is e raised to 3x, right? Next, let us identify yung ating set of solutions, fundamental set of solutions. Our y sub 1 is clearly e raised to 2x. So, e raised to 2x. And our y sub 2 is e raised to negative x. Ayan. What else? Now, we're left to find the Ronskian of y sub 1 and y sub 2. Kasi ito yung ating magiging denominator. So, plugging in our values, we have e raised to 2x and e raised to negative x magkakaroon tayo ng derivative ng e raised to 2x would be 2 e raised to 2x and then negative e raised to x. Negative x. Okay? So, further, no? magkakaroon tayo ng e raised to 2x getting the determinant no? by cross multiplication Gakaroon tayo ng negative e raised to uh, x, kasi 2x minus x, and then minus um, 2 e raised to x ulit. Therefore, yung ating um, Ronskian, y sub 1 and y sub 2, is equivalent to negative e or negative 3 e raised to x. Or ibang natin yung color para negative 3 e raised to x. Ayan, so kukompleto na. May runs na tayo, may y1, y2, at meron na tayong f of x. You can now proceed 
to solving our um, particular solution. Okay? So, ito yun. So, we have u sub 1 equals plugging in our values. Ano yung negative f of x natin? Integral of negative f of x, which is um, e raised to negative x, e raised to, I'm ah, sorry, e raised to 3x. All over, ano yung runs kaya natin? Negative 3e to the x. Negative 3e to the x. And then multiplied by, ano yung y sub 2 natin? e raised to negative x. e raised to negative x. Of course, dx. Okay? So, expanding this will give us um, so negative negative cancels out we can bring out one third and then simplifying e raised to 3x minus x would be e raised to 2x divided by e raised to x will be e raised to x dx no? and thus therefore meron tayong equivalent na e to the x over 3 for our, yes, e to the x over 3 for our u sub 1, okay? Yes, 3 minus x is 2 divided by 1. So, e to the x. Integral ng e to the x, e u d u. So, e to the x plus 3. Yes, e to the x over 3. So, this is our u sub 1. Okay? Now, for u sub 2, we have the integral of what is our f of x? Um, that's e to the 3x ulit. No? e to the 3x all over ano yung ating runs kyan <clears throat> so almost same lang no negative 3 e to the x basically ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay yung y sub 2 at y sub 1 so multiplied by in this case y sub 1 which is e raised to 2x and of course dx now you may question ano take a sir di ba nag integrate tayo dito Eh, di dapat may plus C ito. Actually, that is correct. Dapat may plus C. But later on, you will understand that when it is added to the homogeneous solution, na meron ding constants na C sub 1 and C sub 2, it will just be absorbed by our C sub 1 and C sub 2. That is why, um, hindi na natin for convenience, no? Para less yung confusion, hindi na natin dinadagdag pa yung plus C. Because again, this will be just absorbed by our homogeneous solution na merong uh, C sub 1 and C sub 2. Okay? Okay. So, continuing with our um, computation of U sub 2, eh di magkakaroon tayo ng 3 minus, we can actually factor out again 1 third. This will become negative 1 third. Then integral of 3 times 2 or 3 plus 2 is 5 minus 1 is 4. So, e raised to 4x dx. So, this will become negative one-third e to the 4x all over 4, which is um, negative e to the 12. Yeah. e to the 4x over 12. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have our u sub 1 and u sub 2, we can now proceed and get our yp. Thus, no, yp equals
equals u sub 1 y sub 1 plus u sub 2 y sub 2 and get e to the 3x or e to the x e to the x over 3 multiplied by ano yung y sub 1 natin we have e to the 2x plus ano yung y sub u sub 2 natin that's negative e to the 4x all over 12 multiplied by what's our y2 that's e to the negative x all right e to the negative x and so simplifying we'll get an expression of um, e to the x that's kind of that now we'll have e to the 3x over 3 minus e to the 3x all over 12. Ayan. So simplifying again, so this common denominator is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, therefore 3 over 12 or um, e to the 3x over 4. Yeah. So this is our yp. Right? And so, therefore, the general solution y is equal to yh plus yp will give us y equals c sub 1 e raised to 2x plus c sub 2 e raised to negative x plus e raised to 3x all over 4. This will be our general solution for the homogeneous differential equation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the homogeneous part and this is the particular part. e to the 3x over 4. All right? So Let's take a look at another example. So we have 2y double prime plus 18y equals 6 tangent 3t. 6 tangent 3t. So, paano natin isosolve itong problem na ito? Well, basically, ganun pa rin, no? Solution. We need to get our homogeneous yp, which is um, C sub, I'm ah, sorry, YH pala, the homogeneous solution, which is C sub 1, Y sub 1, plus C sub 2, Y sub 2. Again, sa YH, I, F of X natin is equal to 0. That is why makakabuo tayo ng characteristic equation of um, 2 M squared plus 18 equals 0. 2 plus 18, 2m squared plus 18 equals 0. And let's bring out our calculator to find out what would be our roots. Again, mode 5 and then 3 for quadratic. And then placing our values for our m squared, meron tayong 2. Wala tayong m, so that's 0. And then for our constant, that should be 18. So our roots would be positive and negative 3i. Positive and negative 3i. Okay? So m, oops, 
would be positive and negative 3 or J3. Okay. And we know this is case 3, no? Oops. And the homogeneous solution would then be equivalent to C1 cosine 3 T. Ah, ang variable pala is T, no? not X. So cosine 3T plus C2 sine and then 3T. Ayan. So C1 cosine 3T plus C2 sine 3T. This is our homogeneous solution. Now next is our particular solution, YP, which is U sub 1, Y sub 1, plus U sub 2, Y sub 2. And we know that the solution for us to figure out u sub 1 is equivalent to the integral of oops yeah sorry u sub 1 is equal to the integral of negative f of x all over the Ronskian y sub 1 y sub 2 multiplied by y sub 2 and the u sub 2 can be computed as f of x, the integral of f of x all over the Ronskian of y sub 1 and y sub 2 multiplied by y sub 1. Okay? The next thing we need to do is uh, first, of course, to check kung nasa standard form siya. Standard form naman siya. So check na yan. Next is yung f of x. Yung f of x natin is actually 6 tangent 3t. 6 tangent 3t. What else? How about our fundamental set of solutions? No? Yung y sub 1 and y sub 2 natin. y sub 1 is actually equal to cosine 3t. Ito yun, no? no? From y1, y1, y2, y2. So this will become cosine 3t. Cosine 3t. Wait lang. Cosine 3t Whereas our y sub 2 is sine 3t Ayun. And so finding our Ronskian Which is y sub 1 and y sub 2 Of We have cosine 3t And then sine 3t. I'm getting their derivatives. Magkakaroon tayo ng negative 3 sine 3t. And 3 cosine 3t. Yan. So how do we determine the determinant? <laughs> how do we solve for the determinant? So cross multiply, no? Magkakaroon tayo ng cosine 3t times 3 cosine 3t. This will be 3 cosine squared 3t. And then magkakaroon tayo ng minus negative sine 3t times sine 3t. That will be plus sine 3 sine squared 3t. Right? You can factor out 3 and have sine squared 3t plus cosine squared 3t. Which is an identity, recall from our trigo, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 0. Thus, this will become equal to 1. So therefore, yung ating Ronskian for y sub 1 and y sub 2 will be simply equal to 3. Ayan. So, kompleto na tayo sa ating mga sangkap. Pwede natin silang i-plug in dito sa ating equation. Okay, so this will become so we have u sub 1 equals um, the integral of 
negative f of x, which is, ano yung f of x natin? 6 tangent 3t all over our ron scan, which is simply 3. And then multiplied by yung y sub 2 natin, which is sine 3t. Okay. So simplifying, we know that tangent is sine over cosine. No? Tangent is sine over cosine. So magkakaroon tayo ng... Um, labas muna natin yung constant. Negative 6 over 3 is 2. Integral of sine 3t over cosine 3t times sine 3t. Of course, may dt dyan, may dt dyan. Huh? And then, multiplying, we're going to arrive at negative 2, integral of sine squared 3t all over cosine 3t. But we know that cosine squared 3t is also equivalent to 1 minus cosine squared 3t. So this will become negative 2, integral of 1 minus cosine squared 3t all over cosine 3t. What's next? So this will become negative 2, the integral of no, um, 1 over cosine 3t minus uh, cosine 3t. Sige, dt. Sorry, nalimutan ko ilagay yung dt. Cosine 3t and then dt. Right? So this will become Maybe 6 tangent, actually, yes. Actually, may mali pala tayo. Kasi una, in, sorry, sorry about this. Sorry, hindi pala naka-standard form pa siya dahil, dahil yung ating 2y double prime plus 18y equals 6 tangent 3t ay meron pang 2. So, dapat i-divide natin yung 2 sa whole equation. Kaya, yung standard form natin will be y double prime plus 9y equals 3 tangent 3t. That is why yung ating f of x should be 3 tangent 3t. Yan. So, this should be 3. This should be 3. And so, therefore, no. Magkakaroon tayo ng 3, 3, negative 1. Tagal na itong negative 2. No? Yan. Sorry then, guys. So yan, meron na tayong dt cosine 3t and further simplifying, we'll arrive at um, integral of secant 3t dt minus what is the integral of cosine 3t? Sige mamaya na, pagsabayin na lang natin. So this will be equivalent to Negative, the integral of second three, secant 3t three is actually ln, ln secant 3t, secant 3t plus tangent 3t, no? And then, minus, what's the integral of cosine 3t? 
the integral of cosine 3 t is actually sine or one sine 3 t over 3 okay yeah so there you have it we have negative ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t minus sine 3t over 3 okay so yeah now how about our u2 I sorry, may namis pala ako dito. Um, this should be one third as well over three. Because of du. Yeah. Okay. So further simplifying, we'll have negative one third and then ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t minus sine 3t. Okay. Now for u2, ang u2 naman natin would be equal to the integral of our f of x which is 3 tangent 3t three negative all over 3 yung runs kaya natin and then multiplied by our sine or our y sub 1 which is cosine 3t yan y sub 1 right and so, negative, um, we can, uh, actually, wala tong negative, positive pala to. Yan. So, the integral, for this, we can bring out one-third, no? Or 3 over 3 is 1, so simply uh, tangent 3t, cosine 3t. And we know that um, for tangent, it's sine over cosine, sine 3t. All over cosine 3t multiplied by cosine 3t of course dt and this cancels out cosine 3t cancels out that is why we have an equivalent of integral of sine 3t dt which is equivalent to negative 3 negative 3 cosine 3t negative one third yeah negative cosine 3t over 3 again yung plus in ito will be absorbed by the general solution so ito na siya so mas madali yung u2 no kumpara dito sa u1 medyo haba nung expression. Okay? So basically, that's it for U1 and U2. But we're not yet done with that because we still need to compute for our YP. Right? Thus, yung YP natin, particular solution, since it's u1, y1, plus u2, y2, then substituting, we have, what's our u1? We have ln uh, negative one-third. Negative one-third ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t minus sine 3t. So meron tayong... negative one-third ng ln secant 3t no? plus tangent 3t and then minus cosine 3t.
that's our u1. And then if we multiply it to y1, ang y1 natin is cosine 3t. And then plus, what's our u2? Our u2 is simply cosine 3t over 3. No? Negative cosine. Negative cosine 3t or simply 1 third cosine 3t. Then multiplied by what's our y2? I think that's sine 3t. Sin 3t, right? Yeah, sin 3t. So simplifying for our particular solution, no, um, we can factor out one third here, no, one third and cosine 3t, and arrive at ayun, negative one third. Cosine 3t, then quantity ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t minus cosine 3t, and then This will become plus cosine 3t. Yeah, that's why this one cancels out, no? Negative plus positive cosine 3t. And so we're left with yp to be negative one third or negative cosine 3t all over 3 multiplied by ln secant. 3t plus tangent 3t minus or wala na pala kasi okay na siya yan this is our yp and therefore our general solution our general solution y which is yh plus yp is equivalent to c sub 1 cosine 3t plus c sub 2 sine 3t plus or actually minus cosine 3t all over 3 multiplied by ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, whew, no? <laughs> is our general solution for our non homogeneous differential equation. Okay? Nam namin muna natin sa glit. Alright, so for our last. Example, we have quite a challenging one, no? Because this is a second order, ah, sorry, a third order non homogeneous differential equation, secant x pa. So, hindi pedi ka mag method of undetermined coefficients kasi secant siya, not cosine x. Although 1 over cosine x siya, still not cosine x. So again, solution, no? Solution for the homogeneous part YH You know that it's c sub 1, y sub 1, plus c sub 2, y sub 2, plus 
C sub 3, Y sub 3. Makakasa tayo ng tatlong fundamental set of solutions kasi third order siya. And so, the characteristic equation for this is given to us as um, M cubed plus M no? M cubed plus M equals 0. So solving for M, no, using our calculator, let's bring out our calc -U. So again, mode, equation, 5, and then cubic is 4. Yeah. And then plugging in our coefficients for our characteristic equation. So M cubed, 1. So M squared, wala siyang M squared to 0. So M, we have 1. And then since homogeneous siya, 0. So our solutions are i, negative i, and 0. In other words, this will become 0, no? 0, and then positive or negative j. Yeah. All right. Now, we know na if this is our roots, Meron tayong isang real and distinct and meron tayong complex, case 1 and case 3. Therefore, our homogeneous, by principle of superposition, our homogeneous solution would be C sub 1, Y sub 1. So C sub 1, E raised to 0. E raised to 0x. No? Plus, and then positive or negative J. So, ang equivalent identity niyan is C2. Cosine, no, cosine um, x, yes, cosine x plus C3 sine x. Ayan. So this is our homogeneous solution. But we know that e raised to 0 is actually equal to 1, no? So therefore, this will simply be as equivalent as C, as C sub 1 plus C sub 2 cosine x plus c sub 3 sine x. This is our homogeneous solution. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, next part. Next part is, of course, we have our particular solution, yp, which is u sub 1, y sub 1, plus u sub 2, y sub 2, plus u sub 3, y sub 3, kasi third order siya. Okay? Alright. So, next. What do we do? We need to identify kung ano yung ating, check muna natin, no? Before tayo mag-arrive or bago natin tignan yung ating um, solution, Check muna natin yung kung naka-standard form ba siya. No? Naka-standard form ba yung equation natin? Yes. Kasi 1 naman yung y triple prime. Pangalawa, no? hanapin natin yung f of x. Yung f of x natin here is secant x. Ayan, given sa problem. Secant x. What else? Can we identify kung ano yung y sub 1 and y sub 2 natin? And y sub 3, y sub 1 is actually equal to 1. No? Bakit 1? Kasi yung y mo rito, since e raised to 0, is 1. So 1. What else? How about y sub 2? What is our y sub 2? That's cosine x. Okay? Cosine x. And y sub 3 is actually sine x. So sine x. Okay. Now, next. What will be our Ronskian? Yung Ronskian natin, since tatlo yung solution natin, meron tayong 1, cosine x, and sine x. E di makakabuo tayo ng isang 3 by 3 matrix. And our 3 by 3 matrix will be 1, 
um, cosine x, sine x, and its derivatives. So this will be 0, negative sine x, and then cosine x, and then 0, and negative cosine x, and negative sine x. Okay? So ito yung ating um, Ronskian, no? Now, how do we solve this? Pwede natin employ yung tinatawag na basket method in solving our determinants. Yung basket method, um, yung technique na yun, simply gagawin mo lang, kopyahin mo lang itong dalawa, no? Na columns. So, 1, 0, 0. Tapos, cosine x, negative sine x, tsaka negative cosine x. And kaya siya basket kasi kukunin mo yung diagonals, lahat ng diagonals. So in this case, ito yun. Itong tatlo. No? So that's one going down. So ito. Going down. Then ito rin. And then ito rin. Kaya siya tinawag na basket method kasi parang nag-weave ka ng basket. Na after nitong tatlo, yung pataas naman. No? Which is ito. Ito. At saka finally ito. Ayan. And basically, ang mangyayari sa basket method, lahat na ang pababa ay positive, lahat ng pataas ay negative. No? Kagaya lang din nung parang sa 2 by 2 no? um, Down minus up So lahat, pag samasamahin mo ng lahat ng up And then i-minus mo yun sa lahat ng down Alright? Now we can simplify this already Kasi anything that is multiplied by 0 is 0 So this is already 0 uh, What else? This is already 0 Gawin natin Gawin natin uh, this is already 0. This is already um, 0. <laughs> Balit ulit. And then 0. And then what else? Ito already to 0. And then ito already 0. Yan. Kasi ito, dahil sa 0 na to, dahil sa 0 na to. Yan. 0. And then 0. Okay. So, ano yung natira sa atin? We're left with this one, which is negative sine x minus sine x. This gives us um, negative sine x multiplied by negative sine x. And then, what else? Etong pataas minus negative cosine x multiplied by cosine x. Okay. So, this gives us This gives us negative sine x minus sine x is actually cosine uh, sine squared x positive, no? And then minus negative cosine squared s x, so making plus cosine squared x. And we know already from trigo that this is an, an identity which is equivalent to one. That is why. The Ronskian of y sub 1, y sub 2, and y sub 3 is simply equal to 1. Okay? Ayun. So, next is, we now have, since na-identify na natin yung ating mga sangkap, ano, para sa ating third order na DE, same din naman yung process kagaya sa second order, wherein, to get u1 and u2, no, to get u1 prime, because recall that uh, the system of solutions that will be generated that will be generated ay magkakaroon tayo ng simultaneous equations na u sub 1 prime y sub 1 plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 plus u sub 3 prime y sub 3 equals 0. And then your second is u sub 1 prime y sub 1 double prime plus 
u sub 2 prime y sub 2 double prime plus u sub 3 prime y sub 3 double prime. And then finally, y sub 1 prime y sub 1 triple prime plus u sub 2 prime y sub 2 triple prime plus u sub 3 prime y sub 3 triple prime. This is equivalent to 0 and then this is equivalent to yung ating f of x. Okay? Now, if we're going to find yung ating u sub 1 or u prime sub 1, right? u prime sub 1. By Kramer's rule, yun nga yung du1 prime all over d, which is yun din yung ating Ronskian d, right? So, this is equivalent to our Ronskian y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. Bakit? Kasi yung ating determinant is simply just this area, no? Ito saka ito without yung 0, 0 and fx and as we have seen it is simply just the Ronskian yung principle ng Ronskian is kung meron kang y sub 1, y sub 2 and y sub 3 as your um, first row and then yung succeeding rows niya is yung kanyang derivatives no n minus 1 derivatives I sorry this should be yeah n minus 1 so this should be y prime y prime, y prime, and double prime. So, n minus 1. Yan. Okay? So, again, to get yung ating du1 prime, which is this row, no? kailangan nating palitan itong row na ito ng ating answer column. So, magkakaroon ka ng 0, 0, fx, at saka lahat ng y2, y, y prime 2, y2 double prime, tsaka y3, y3 prime, tsaka y3 tri, uh, double prime. Now, merong, as explained uh, kanina, uh, we can actually factor out or we can form yung ating wif na tinatawag. No? Um, for us to be able to get u1 prime, no? we can simply simplify no yung ating expression of solution to be the integral uh the if you want to get u1 no we have to integrate u1 prime which is integrating yung f of x all over the ronskian no multiplied by kung pang ilan siya w i f na tinatawag determinant no kung pang ilang for higher uh, order. So, paano natin makukuha yung WIF? Yung WIF, basically, in this case, is simply, um, wait, yung W1, in this case, is simply equivalent to yung ating matrix, no? We will be forming a matrix here, wherein, Kung u1 yung kukunin natin, papalitan natin to, no? Nang 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1. Yun yung answer column natin. Kasi itong f of x, finactor out natin. Nandito siya sa labas. No? So, yung wif is basically, as discussed dun sa PPT kanina, is basically um, a matrix wherein 0, 0 until marating na yung f of x and then ito y sub 1 y sub 2 until y sub n, no? And then y sub 2 until y sub um, n minus 1. I'm sorry, y sub 1 raised to n minus 1. Yeah. And then y sub 2 prime until y sub 2 n minus 1. No? Yeah. So, depende kasi sa... Uh, order nung di mo, yung magiging matrix mo. So, kung second order, 2 by 2 yung magiging matrix mo. Kung third order, 3 by 3 yung magiging matrix mo. So, that is why, um, yung WIF mo, basically, the idea is, kung, kung ano yung hinahanap mong um, uh, U parameter, for example, U sub 1, eh, dun mo sa first column ilalagay yung 0, 0, 1 mo na answer column. Pag u sub 2 yung hinahanap mo, nandun naman sa pangalawa yung 0, 0, 1. Pag u sub 3, edi nasa pangatlo yung 0, 0, 1. Okay? Yun yung basic idea. 
you can go back and revisit yung discussion on WIF. Now, in here, basically, since ito ay uh, 1, so this uh, part here, u sub 1, papalitan natin yung u sub 1 ng ating answer column, 0, 0, 1. Again, 0, 0, 1 siya, hindi f of x, kasi yung f of x, finactor out natin dito. So, kumbaga ito, parang general formula na to para sa lahat. f of x over the Ronskian multiplied by w1 for u1, w2 for u2, w3 for u3. So, ganito gawin, ganito gawin ko para mas ma-appreciate nyo, no? y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. Ron scan, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. And then u sub 2 is actually uh, equal to the integral of u sub 2 prime, which is the integral of, in this case, alam na tayo nung mga negative-negative, no? Kasi yun, exclusive lang yun para sa second order. Makukuha mo rin siya gamit nito actually, you know? Uh, Gamit yung WIF for higher order. So, the runs kyan, y sub 1, y sub 2, and y sub 3 multiplied by w2. And finally, u sub 3 equals the integral of u sub 3 prime equals the integral of f of x all over the runs kyan. Yun nakuha na natin kanina, y sub 1, y sub 2, and y sub 3 multiplied by W3. Ayan. Na ang tanong na lang is kung ano yung W1, W2, at W3. How are we going to find those three values? Ngayon, at yun nga yung... Sige. The demonstrate natin. So, finding the W1, which is simply just the determinant, no? To find U sub 1. This is equivalent to Based dito sa system of equations natin, ano, papalitan natin yung first column ng ating 0, 0, 001 na answer column. So, 0, 0, 001. And then, retain yung y sub 2 and y sub 3. In this case, yung y sub 2 at y sub 3 natin, na-identify na natin here, which is cosine x and sine x. Cosine x and sine x. Actually, pwede ka magbase dito sa Ron's scan mo. Ito yun, no? Papalitan mo lang to ng 0, 0, 1. Tapos kopyahin mo lang to. Kasi ito din yun, no? Ito din yun. Right? No, pwede mo rin naman siya differentiate At makakuha ka na equivalent na negative sine x. And then cosine x. And then negative cosine x. And then negative sine x. Okay? Now, similar. Ganun uli. Basket method. So, this will become, kopyahin lang natin to 0, 0, 1, at saka um, cosine x, negative sine x, and then negative cosine x. Then again, by basket method, kunin natin yung lahat ng pababa, tapos kunin natin yung lahat ng pataas. Okay? So, ayun. Wait, palit lang pa lang to para consistent tayo. 0, 0, 1. Okay. Now, lahat, uh, by basket method, in diagonals, ito, and then ito yung sunod, and then ito yung next. Alright. And then, yung mga upward naman, ito yun, and then ito yun, And then, ito pa isa. Okay? So, tingnan natin kung ano yung mga may zero para madali nang ma-eliminate. Ito, zero to. No? So, zero ka agad to. Ito, zero ka agad to. And what else? Ito, one. Ito, zero ka agad to. And then, ito, zero ka agad to. And then, ito din, 0 ka agad. Kasi, multiplied by 0. And so, we're left with um, cosine squared. Cosine squared x minus 
we have negative sine x negative sine x squared or negative sine squared x yeah and so again ganun uli we or we can notice na our equivalent expression for w sub 1 is simply equivalent to 1 no kasi cosine squared x plus sine squared x is by trigonometric uh, identity is equal to 1 Okay, so meron na tayo ng 1, value for w sub 1 natin. Alright, now how about yung ating w sub 2? Ito yung hinahanap natin, ano? w sub 1, w sub 2, w sub 3. Kasi pag nahanap na natin yan, saka pa lang natin siya isa-substitute dito para makabuo tayo ng equation. Okay? Medyo matrabaho lang siya, pero pag nakuha nyo siya, no? uh, dire-diretso na. So for w sub 2, For W sub 2, ganun ulit. No? Yun nga lang, itong second column ang papalitan natin no? ng ating answer column 0, 0, 1. Kaya, mara-retain yung ating um, 1, 0, 0 dito. No? Kasi, bakit siya 1, 0, 0? Kasi yung Y sub 1 natin is 1. Yung derivative ng... Ay, sorry. Uh... Ay, yeah. Yung y sub 1 natin is a constant 1. Tapos yung derivative niya is 0, 0. So, 1, 0, 0. So, 1, 0, 0. Tapos ito yung papalitan ng answer column. Tapos ito, i-retain. Okay? So, kumbaga, um, So, kumbaga, ito yung y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. Ganun din dito, ito yung y sub 1, y sub 2, and then y sub 3. Yung y sub 1 natin is um, 1, which is a constant. Kaya naman, magiging 0 siya. And then, ah, sorry. 1, and then yung derivative niya is 0, 0. And then yung y2 natin, yun yung papalitan natin ng ating answer column, which is 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1. Okay. 0, 0, 1. And then, retain yung y3, which is sine x, and then cosine x, and then negative sine x. Okay? And then, ganun ulit. Copy natin by basket method. And then, 0, 0, 1. Alright. So, from here, By basket method, ito, this one is a diagonal, this one too, and then this one. Okay? And then yung mga pataas naman, we have this one, we have this one, and finally we have this one. Okay? Alright. So, Simplify natin, no? Lahat ng mga may 0, ito 0 to, ito 0 to, ito ay 0 din, no? Ito 0, hmm, ito, 1 cosine 1, so cosine to, and then ito 0 din. In other words, W2 is equal to negative cosine x. Kasi lahat ito ay 0. So, 0 minus 1 cosine x. Negative cosine x. Ayan. So, that's our W2. Okay? Next. Finally, yung W3 natin no yung w3 natin we'll have an equivalent of kung ito yung ating y1 y2 and y3 
hindi magkakaroon tayo ng 1, 0, 0, and then yung ating y sub 2 is actually cosine x, no? Cosine x. So this would be cosine x, negative sine x, and negative cosine x. Whereas yung y3 natin, yun yung papalitan natin ng answer column. So magkakaroon tayo ng 0, 0, 1. Okay? And then, ganun uli by basket method. No? Kopyahin natin itong dalawa. 1, 0, 0. Tsaka, parang in-extend mo lang actually siya. Para lang ma dali mong ma-visualize yung basket method. So for this, no, lahat ng pababa, ito yon. This is one. This is another. Then this is another. Okay? And then lahat naman ng pataas. This one. This one. And then this one. Okay? Alright. Now, what's next? W3, we identify kung ano yung mga may zero para mas madali natin silang makita. No? And we'll have um, itong mga pababa. Ito, magkakaroon ako ng negative sign x dito. Negative sign negative sign x. And then ito, zero to. Ito, zero din to. Ito, zero din. And then ito, zero din. And then ito, zero din. Yan. So therefore, W3 is equal to negative sign x. Okay? Negative sign x. Ayan. So nakompleto na natin yung W1, W2, and W3. Ready na tayo para isubstitute yung mga yan para masolve natin yung U1, U2, and U3. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. No? Substituting all values, magkakaroon tayo ng u sub 1 equals the integral of f of x. Ano yung f of x natin? Our f of x is secant x. Substituting all values, sige, lagay ko na rito para may reference tayo. This will become f of x all over yung runs kaya natin. Okay lang, wx na lang. And then multiplied by w1. So this will become the integral of what is our f of x, yung ating secant x. All over, ano yung runs kaya natin? Yes, 1. And then multiplied by, what is our W sub 1? 1. 1 then. And of course, dx. Okay? And so, the integral of secant x, as we know it, is ln secant x tangent x. ln secant x plus tangent x. Yeah. All right. How about u sub 2? Di ba mas madali? Kasi pa-plug mo na lang sila. u sub 2 is the integral of, ganun ulit, f of x all over the Ronskian. Let wx be the Ronskian multiplied by w sub 2. So this will become the integral of W sub uh, f of x, similar ulit, ganun. Secant x over 1. All over 1. Multiplied by, what is our w2? Our w2 is this one. Negative cosine x. Negative cosine x. Okay. Of course, dx. And simplifying, secant x is actually 1 over cosine x. So cosine x over cosine x will simply become 1. Therefore, um, this will become negative 1 integral of dx 
Sige, pakita na natin. No? X will become negative the integral of cosine x over cosine x dx. So this simply will become negative x. Right? Yan. Again, yung plus c will just be carried out by the homogeneous solution. So no need to write it out for to lessen the confusion. Okay? Yan. And finally, u sub 3 equals the integral of f of x all over w of x multiplied by w3 equals the integral of same, same, no? Secant x all over 1. Actually, dapat di ko na nga ilagay. Time consuming. Pero okay lang. What is our W3? Yun yung nakuha natin kanina. That's negative sine x. Nakuha natin from this matrix. Right? So, multiplying to W3 will give us um, negative sine x. Okay. Of course, dx. So, magkakaroon tayo dito ng negative integral of sine x all over cosine x, which is, of course, tangent x. But if we let u to be sine x, or sorry, cosine x, we know that du will become du is equivalent to negative sine x. Hence, this will become the integral of du over u or ln u, which is cosine x. Yeah. So there you go. We have now u1, u2, and u3. Pero hindi pa tayo nagtatapos dyan sapagkat <laughs> gagamitin natin yan para kunin yung yp natin. Thus, yp equals u sub 1, y sub 1 plus u sub 2, y sub 2 plus u sub 3, y sub 3, getting all the functions here, no? substituting them. u1 natin na nakuha is ln secant x plus tangent x. So, ln secant x plus tangent x multiplied by y1, which is 1, no? And then plus, ano yung u2 natin? Our u2 is negative x. negative x multiplied by what is our y2 that's I think cosine x and of course our y3 u3 y, uh, u3 is um, this one ln cosine x ln cosine x and of course multiplied by y3 which is sine x ayun. So in this case, I think hindi na ito kayang i-simplify. Maaaring ito na yung simplest form niya. So ito na yung ating yp. And so therefore, the general solution, y, which is 
the sum of the homogeneous solution and the particular solution will give us what is our homogeneous solution that c sub 1 plus c sub 2 cosine x plus c sub 3 sine x plus we have ln secant x plus tangent x minus x cosine x plus ln cosine x sine x. Yeah. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final or general and or complete solution for our non-homogeneous differential equation y triple prime plus y prime minus or equals secant x. All right. Thank you very much for taking your time. And I hope you learned a thing or two from this presentation. That ends my presentation. Thank you for listening. This is our problem set 17. Okay? The salience, let us pray. I will continue, oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of thee. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. And I'm leaving you with these um, words. Your talent will open the door, but only your character can keep you there. This was said by Christine Kane. Thank you, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye, and God bless.